Hi, welcome back guys. This is your friend, the D and What If, with another fanfiction. This is the movie of What If Deku and Kaken were adopted by a pro hero. All credits for this video go to their respective authors. So please support the real author. Check out the link in the description for more details. Please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. It was the morning after the sports festival. Todoroki's eyes opened up slowly. His body moved up as he rubbed them a little. When he took a look at where he was he was startled for a second but he calmed down when remembered last night. He'd gotten third place yesterday's sports festival but he remembered why he was here. Shoto Todoroki had asked one of his mentors, Anton Shepard, if he could adopt him. To his surprise he not only said yes but managed to succeed in to a degree by allowing his father to sign over legal guardianship to him. Having dinner with his adopted sons, Izuku Midoriya and Katsuki Bakugo, and then being allowed to spend the night over at their home. That's how Shoto found himself a new residence of Shepard's family. He checked his phone for any new messages. His brother congratulated him on yesterday and was looking forward to see his friends tonight. Fayumi also sent him a good morning message to have fun with his new friends and that dinner will be great today. He sent them each a reply telling them that his friend's father he had said yes to meeting for dinner. That's when he looked at the time. It was 9 a.m. Usually he wakes up around 5-6 a.m. even during the weekend. Suppose his battle with Midoriya took more out of him than he really thought. Right Midoriya was across the hall from his room. Or was it really his room he's only been here one night? Shoto got up to use the restroom and to wash his face a bit. He looked odd in Bakugo's clothes he really seems to like skulls for some reason. When he made his way out to the hall he saw that Midoriya was still asleep he must have been more tired given how he fought Bakugo yesterday. He went to Bakugo's door and saw he was also out cold. Not sure what to do he remembered that Shepard Sensei's room was at the end of the hall. He could only hope he wasn't also asleep. Shoto walked and gave the door a knock come in. Good he wasn't asleep. He opened Shepard's room and saw him writing on a few pieces of paper. He took in Shepard's environment, large king-size bed, several drawers, and a bathroom to the side. There were fewer pictures of Izuku and Midoriya but the one where he was holding them as kids had been in his nightstand. He saw an open closet, largely consisting of black shirt, military pants and boots. Did he serve time in the military? Shoto thought to himself. He couldn't help but notice several stacks of papers were put to the side of the room. Whatever he was working on must have been very big. Good morning Shepard Sensei, Todoroki said in a calmer voice than usual. Truth be told he still wasn't sure how to interact with his new guardian. He respected him that was without question but Shoto wasn't fully aware of what he could talk about with him. I mean what could they even discuss about? Food, the weather, ways to annoy Endeavor. Wait that last one didn't sound so bad maybe he could try it sometime. Good morning Todoroki, Shepard said with a smile. He stood up and popped his back and arms he hadn't realized how much time had passed. Well that's to be expected as he works long nights and sleep to him as a non-existent companion. He approached Todoroki and could see him eyeing at the stacks of papers in his room. Oh kid you really don't want to enter my office then, Shepard mentally said. Everything alright kid? Shifter asked. Yes I just noticed your sons are still asleep. I didn't want to wake them up. But what exactly do I do for today? I mean do we train or talk about school? And what about the guest room? Is it really considered my room? And should we discuss ways on how to annoy my father? And Todoroki was stopped mid-sentenced when he felt Shifter gently flick his forehead. I see you've picked up Midoriya's mumbling habits and in such a short time too. He ruffled Todoroki's hair a little bit. Yeah this was his first morning with Todoroki so he wasn't going to do anything so crazy. Come on kid follow me. Shepard made his way past him and Todoroki was close to follow and asked if he should wake his sons up he reassured him that won't be necessary they'll wake up sooner than Todoroki thinks. They made their way to the kitchen on the first floor and Shepard instructions Todoroki to sit on the little island that was in the kitchen. From there Shepard began to search for everything he needed and got to work. He hummed softly as he begins to make pancakes. He was halfway through mixing the batter when he turned to look at Shoto. I hope you enjoy pancakes kid, particularly chocolate chip. Shoto looked down a bit as he twiddled with his fingers a bit. I'm sorry to say but I've rarely had the chance to eat some. My father was very adamant to keep a perfect diet, but I'm not allergic to any of the ingredients that's needed to make them. He continued to mix the batter but gave Shoto a small a nod. Kid should deserves a simple breakfast not a forced planned diet. He fought the urge to sigh as he really didn't want to bring down Shoto's first morning here. Well then I hope my cooking is to your liking kid. He pulled out a skillet and turned on the stove. Once the skillet was hot enough he poured over a spoonful of batter into the skillet. While he waited Todoroki, on that second cabinet there are some plates, would you mind grabbing five please? Of course sensei. Todoroki stood up as he saw Shepard sprinkle chocolate chips on their breakfast. He opened the cabinets and carefully grabbed five plates. He placed each one at the island as Shepard instructed him to. Sensei will be expecting an extra person this morning. 
Shoto asked curiously as he sat back down. Shifter had finished making his first batch of pancakes. No, it'll only be the four of us today. Eraser is gonna be here tomorrow morning letting you know ahead of time. He placed the pancakes on the center plate of the aisle as he went to make another batch. Oh, in the fridge there's plenty of juice or milk. Help yourself to whichever you'd like, kid. Todoroki nodded as he got up he opened the fridge and it was fully well stocked with fresh supplies. Anton truly prepared for everything. He grabbed a container of orange juice when he stopped for a bit. What about Midoriya and Bakugo? Should I prepare their drinks too? It would be rude of him to only get a beverage for himself since he's a guest here. Shepard mixed some more batter. That would be appreciated Todoroki thank you. Both also like orange juice so you may want to bring two more containers. Shoto gave a nod as he placed three containers of orange juice. He was directed to a cabinet that had the cups and placed three on the table. He sat back down as Shepard Haid made a large amount of pancakes. Anton placed three containers of syrup as he turned off the stove and made his way to the coffee machine and turned it on to make his fresh pot of coffee. I've never done anything like this Shepard Sensei. Helping in the kitchen I mean. Usually my meals would be prepared when I woke up. I hope I didn't mess anything up. Truth be told he never had to worry about food being ready for him. Each time there was always a plate of well-made food ready for him. He did try and help Fayumi one time but she insisted not to worry himself over it. His culinary skills were completely non-existent and he never had the time to learn how to cook. It's ironic he has a fire quirk which would he ideal for cooking but he barely even knows how to make a plain egg. You did good kid. Shepard told him as he took a sip from his coffee honestly at least you didn't start a food fight. Teaching my two sons how to cook was an experience to say the least. Remembering the many, many, many food fights that happened in this kitchen caused by his sons. Speaking of, the sound of two running footsteps could be heard as the boys barged in the first floor. The look on Izuku and Bakugo's face had Shoto dumbfounded. They were out of breath but ran immediately down and began to serve themselves a good amount of food. Before Todoroki could say anything Izuku raised his voice at him. Todoroki don't just sit there dig in. These are pancakes that our dad only makes on special occasion. Izuku said in a very stern voice that surprised Shoto. It was like he was seeing a drill sergeant yell at a new recruit to finish his meal before he was sent to war. What didn't surprise his was Bakugo yelling next. Exactly what the nerd said half and half. And you better savor each fucking taste. Now eat damn it. Bakugo demanded as he started to eat away. And he could see Izuku was stuffing his face in two. So Shoto relented. He took a small bite and that caused him to drop his fork and knife. These are amazing. Damn right they are now eat up. Both boys shouted and Todoroki happily complied to do so. What followed was the three of them devouring their breakfast and chugging those containers of orange juice. Shepard joined them but he ate at a slower pace watching over the three of them making sure they don't choke themselves to death. After breakfast and all the plates were cleaned up everyone sat down on the living and turned on the TV. Izuku and Katsuki sitting side by side while Todoroki sat next to Shifter. As they went through each channel several replays of yesterday event was on every channel. Several pro heroes were being interviewed for their opinions on this year's students. The reviews were largely positive and filled with enthusiasm, especially with every pro hero having each student as their potential new intern. So dad what are we doing for today? Izuku asked as he saw his old man was paying attention to the TV on moment while also looking at his phone. More than likely looking at some emails for when they go back to school. He never really stops working does he? Shepard put his phone in his pocket. For today. Nothing so serious just gonna show Todoroki around the neighborhood and go to the mall. He continued to watch the TV a bit seeing a replay of Kirishima defeating Tetsu Tetsu. That kid really did use what he taught him. Oh Todoroki you want to tell them about tonight or no? Izuku and Bakugo looked at Todoroki. Shepard wanted him to try and be a bit closer so he wanted to give to do a bit to a small nudge on speaking for himself. It may be a bit sudden but it's a small statement to start off. Todoroki was a bit surprised that Shifter wanted him to tell his sons about tonight. Well he here goes nothing my sister, Fayumi, wanted to meet you too and she invited us over for dinner. My father will also be there. Todoroki said that last part sheepishly. I'm aware your father doesn't like mine but I'd figured it would also be a good way to introduce Shepard being my new guardian. He was starting to sweat a bit as he looked to his side. Even telling them this much was a lot of effort on his part. Bakugo shrugged a it's whatever Isahat. You met our chaotic family guess we'll meet yours. There's nothing to it. He turned his attention back to the TV and could see a replay of his performance in the race, particularly towards the scene of him taking down a zero-pointer. His quirk really has gotten stronger as he looked down at his arms. He would have used his quirk has the old fart not been in the same room as him. Izuku gave Todoroki a reassuring smile however. He saw a quick highlight of his match against Shinso. He was glad to know that they both did their best in terms of pure fighting skill. Well hopefully meeting Endeavor won't be as intimidating as last time. Izuku chuckled not realizing he opened a can of worms with that comment. Last time, Todoroki, Bakugo and Shifter asked at the same time. 
When the hell did you meet Candy Kane's father nerd? Bakugo asked with a raised eyebrow look turn in his attention from the TV to Izuku. Oh before my match with Todoroki, Endeavor kinda approached me. He asked about my quirk but also to not hold back against him. Said to bring out your full potential. Shoto had a look of disgust but it wasn't towards Izuku. Though it was at Endeavor, he really was trying to bring out a side of him he didn't want to accept. He would go so far as to try and manipulate one of his friends to rile him up in his match. But he knew Midoriya's comments weren't because of Endeavor they were because of Shifter. So he let his anger subside. He especially didn't want to use his quirk in this new home. But I told him Todoroki is a human being and that he'll fight his own way. Izuku casually shrugged off that comment like it wasn't a big deal to tell Endeavor to piss off in a polite manner. This surprised Bakugo and Todoroki, Izuku telling the number two hero to piss off. No one would ever believe him. Shepard couldn't help but chuckle you're definitely my son Izuku. After a few hours of talking and watching the replays, Shepard figured it was time, telling the boys to get ready as they were going to head out. Todoroki still had the spare change in cloths Bakugo had given him but he was lent a pair of casual clothing. Another black shirt though this one didn't consist of a skull, and was a lounge sleeve. Izuku chose to go with his iconic red sneakers, some loose pants and a plain black shirt that had the words red written on them. Bakugo went with a black shirt keeping his iconic skull. Todoroki had also noticed that Midoriya and Bakugo were wearing smaller, but identical, jackets to the ones that Shifter wore. He was under the impression his sensei didn't sell merchandise. While Shifter was in his office, putting on his jacket, he'd set his phone to call. He had been waiting for a few seconds before the dreaded call of the day had been answered. Endeavor speaking. Endeavor Shifter said coldly on the other line. Shifter, I was unaware you had my contact information. Endeavor spoke with a bit of callousness in his voice. You're right, it's not as though I've an entire dossier on you. Which includes your history, your quirk, place of residence, agency and a possible contingency plan to stop you if you ever go rogue and become a villain. He let that last one sink in hard. I guess somewhere along the list I forgot to add your phone number to that page Endeavor the sarcasm was running dry from Shepard's tone of voice. Why are you calling Shifter? I very much doubt it's for a social call. If you're only here to delay my time in hero work then perhaps you can bother someone else for a change. Endeavor was seconds away from hanging up and melting his phone. Shifter sighed and relented I'm calling for two reasons actually. The first is I assume you have the papers to sign over Shoto's guardianship over to me. Shifter asked tapping his foot on the floor he really didn't want to drag the conversation long unless needed. There was a small silence before Endeavor spoke yes, you wish to meet sometime today. How about tonight? Endeavor gave a disappointing grunt at hearing Shepard's request. I'm unable to meet tonight. My daughter asked me to join her and my children for dinner. It would seem Shoto is bringing along some friends and their father will be joining. Endeavor did speak in a professional manner, cold and harsh but professional nonetheless. Of course that would always go out the window on the rare moments he and Shifter were in the same vicinity. Tell me you're fucking with me. He pinched the bridge between his nose. If I was it wouldn't be like this Endeavor. Shepard said as he slightly banged his head on the wall. You're going to come over to dinner. With your family. To my house. Tonight. It wasn't a question more so a dreadful confirmation of reality. Yes, hence my second reason for calling. He was staring at his right wrist. It was only slightly swollen and had a tight mark, but he could still feel the pain from yesterday. Just what the hell did Shifter do to him? Your sons are friends with Shoto. He sighed this time they are. Now we can probably discuss the guardianship over dinner but Shoto hasn't told his siblings about it. You will not tell them either. That will be Shoto's decision to tell not mine or yours. Yes, I haven't informed Fayumi about you being Shoto's new guardian. Be that as it may I will not mention this to anyone. He paused as he let the silence fill the outside. Is there anything else you wish to discuss Shifter? Anton let the uncomfortable silence fill his office know nothing else. Excellent but I have one final question for you. I know what I saw yesterday. What exactly are you? It felt more like a demand than a question but Endeavor had to know what exactly Shifter was hiding. What you saw yesterday is not up for discussion nor will it ever be NG Todoroki. The grip Anton had on his phone he could have sworn he was about to break his phone in half. Endeavor sighed knowing he wasn't going to get anywhere then we have nothing further to discuss until we meet in person. Very well, Owen Endeavor. He let the silence fill in as he wanted Inji to hear this next part loud and clear. If I ever find out you talk to one of my sons behind my back. Next time I will rip that right arm to yours off and shove it so far up your ass people will be able to see it when you yawn. Once he got that message through he hung up. Tonight was going to be a dreadful memory to remember. 10.17am after showing Todoroki the neighborhood, Shepard drove them around the city mostly to sightsee areas that the boys used to visit during the summer and the holidays. He took Shoto to a park that the boys would constantly to spend entire afternoons when they were young kids, playing on swing sets, seeing who could last the longest on a monkey bars, digging in the sandbox, going down the slide and racing each other back and forth. 
That was definitely a bit of a nostalgic trip for the boys. Between UA and training they hadn't really had time to do something simple like visit their childhood park. Then came a personal favorite spot for Shepard, a large cherry blossom tree that was next to a small lake. Something about seeing this tree at all way made Anton nostalgic as it was one of the first things he saw when he came to Japan for the first time. The boys would always enjoy seeing their old man's face go soft at the sight of seeing that tree. They knew the significance behind it so they always sat in silence and took in the scenery of that tree. After that small bit of nostalgia, Shoto was driven to a small bakery cafe nearby. The sweet smell of bread and coffee had always been a good trip down memory lane for them the Ampens here always made Izuku drool and crave for more. At one point Shepard had to physical lift and 10-year-old Izuku away from the store due to how much he was ordering. Katsuki was no better. While he always maintained a healthy diet and would always prefer spicy food, but the sandwiches here always left a good taste in his mouth that there has been times where he'd ordered two extra orders just for himself. Shepard on the other hand would usually get a simple coffee and a donut. Thing is that coffee always had such a fresh smell that he wanted to savor each and every last drop. So when the family took their orders Shoto had only really asked for simple bagel with cream cheese. They all sat on the outside and enjoyed their quick bite to eat. Needless to say Shoto may have discovered a new place to visit as he enjoyed devouring that bagel. 12.19pm A bit of sightseeing later, Shepard and the boys were making their way to the mall. Traffic had been non-existing so it would be a very easy drive. The main objective was to get Todoroki some additional clothes, along with a few items that the boys want. He knew Bakugo needed a new set of weights and Izuku more than likely already had a list of hero merchandise at the ready. For the most part Todoroki had remained silent only occasionally making a comment or two about each place they visited today. Shepard did take note when he was on his phone. The look he had was a mix of relief and worry. More than likely he was texting his family about tonight. To be fair he really couldn't blame him. Yesterday was a life changer for Shoto and he wasn't going to push it too far. Slow and steady they say right. Izuku had his list of items that he was gonna buy today at the ready. Some new hero merchandise and a few additional weights just like Bakugo. He took a look at his casted arm. It only stung but he wasn't about to risk making it worse. Secretly he wanted to train more but he knew that today was just a relaxing day. So what's the best way for Izuku to relax? Talk to Bakugo and add gasoline to the fire that was about to happen. Oh by the way Kaken. You receive any texts or call from our class? Izuku asked as they were pulling up to the highway that lead to the mall. Katsuki was looking out the window before giving Izuku a glance. Just sh Kirishima. Apparently he wants to hang out because that's what friends do or some shit. Bakugo looked to see Izuku had eyes as wide as they could grow what? You called Kirishima by his name. If there are sparkles they would be all around Izuku I'm so proud of you. You're finally growing as a human being and becoming less of an angry gremlin. A small crocodile tear could be seen as Izuku gauge a theatric performance brings a tear to my eye kaka. Fuck off you shitey nerd. Bakugo growled at Izuku's performance. Yeah calling Kirishima by his name should be more natural to him now. Shit ever since the whole Bakubro comment Bakugo couldn't stop wondering why Kirishima wanted to hang out with him much less think of him as a friend. But he part of him was secretly glad he was beginning to open up a bit more. Largely due to an influence to his family. Besides Kirishima always seemed eager to test how far he could use his hardening quirk. And fighting was usually how Bakugo responded with his feelings. Oh come on I'm just teasing Kaken. Izuku reassured him, knowing when it was okay to stop. Just happy for you really. Glad you have someone else that can help you to be a better hero. Plus Kirishima is always ready to push past his limits thanks to you. Yeah Katsuki huffed as he shoved his hands in his pockets it does feel a bit good. And maybe it's not so bad having another training partner who can keep. That wasn't a lie to be honest. There were times when it felt like Bakugo needed to use more force than usual to get past Kirishima's hardening quirk. And when they fought pure hand to hand, felt a bit nostalgic seeing the old moves he and Izuku used. Yesterday's match onto confirmed it. Is it any wonder he starred to refer to Kirishima by his name? Tusk damn nerd. That positive attitude of yours is gonna get me killed one day. Izuku let out a giggle. Not like your explosive attitude hasn't rubbed off on me. Katsuki gave him a side-eyed look yeah but you could use a fucking backbone. An evil grin stretched across Katsuki's face. Maybe if you'd actually listened to me a bit more you might have won yesterday's battle. And there's the gasoline and fire only Bakugo made the first move on that immediate argument. Shepard internally sighed as he drove closer to the mall. He could already feel the battle coming up. Izuku gave Bakugo a squinted eye look you just got lucky I only used one arm to attack. You had to use two of them to match my power. Katsuki narrowed his eyes not my fault you couldn't react fast enough to my attack. Aren't you supposed to be the quote-unquote faster one of us? I don't know aren't you supposed to be the heavy hitter? Maybe your hits aren't as strong as you think if I'm able to casually tank them. Izuku countered. Oh please like that small body of yours can even tank a few blows. How many times has your quirk whiplash hit you hard? Katsuki countered back. 
I will punch you a small spark showed on Izuka's body. Cast or no these boys wouldn't hesitate to rumble in the truck. Katsuki laughed better make your one blow count than nerd. We both know I can still knock your ass out. Izuku's eyes were now twitching well in that case. Sons, Katsuki and Izuku immediately tensed upon hearing the old man's voice. We're at the mall. Now remember we are here to bond, to have a good time around, and to welcome Shoto into our non-chaotic and happy family of ours. Understood, Shifter said with a closed-eyed smile and a very sweet-toned voice. It made Izuku and Katsuki shudder. It was the sort of smile he had right before assigning them with extra chores, harsher training and taking away any sort of exclusive merchandise and phone privileges. Translation You will not cause any chaotic behavior today you little shitheads. They both gulped yes dad. Shoto had remained confused as to how Shepard could be so intimidating and so nice at the same time. The mall was a rather nice experience for all of them. It started with for the most part Izuku dragging Todoroki around every time he saw a new merchandise. Shoto couldn't understand why he liked these items so much. The situation was made worse when he admitted to not own a single piece of merchandise. Izuku's jaw may as well hit the center of the earth. No one in this household was gonna go on living without at least one piece of merchandise. For the next hour Izuku would practically show Todoroki different kind of merchandise. Or rather it was more so Todoroki seeing Izuku fanboy about every possible new item on the store. He still didn't realize why it matters if an All Might figure had a different colored cape, or why Midoriya fell in a dramatic pose to the ground when there weren't any new All Might shirts from the Golden Age era since he remembered seeing his closet full of that merchandise. Todoroki did stop to see an edge-shot leather jacket that caught his eye. He looked at the pricing and it wasn't expensive, but he felt resentment in trying to use his father's money. He didn't want to be connected to him. How he even considered using his quirk to melt that black CC right on the spot. Those feelings had been put aside when Izuku reminded him that Shepard was paying for everything today. Todoroki grabbed the jacket along with a few All Might shirts once they got out of the store. Todoroki wasted no time in putting on his new leather jacket. I'm close to matching you three now, he said with a bit of sincerity in his voice. Izuku's eyes definitely beamed up with sparkles at the realization he Shoto was trying to fit in with them. Bakugo chose to buy a new set of handset, mostly due to the fact that his old ones were beginning to see their age. He was actually a good music lover, asking Shepard if he could learn how to play the drums from a young age as he remembered how much his parents would always get a laugh at seeing a young Katsuki use a pair of chopsticks as a pair of drumming sticks. It was one of the few things he had that he could connect with his birth parents. Not that he wasn't grateful to Shepard for paying for those lessons, but he wished Masaru and Mitsuki could have been alive to see him play one time. Over time he grew to enjoy listening to rock or metal music. Izuku and Anton were the only ones who knew that he listened to electronic music, enjoying it just as much as rock and metal, they would always fit perfectly with his workout routines. Izuku crossed off enough of the items on his list, they'd just gotten out of a regular cloth store, knowing that Todoroki would need regular cloths rather than full-on merchandise. Todoroki had gathered a decent amount of casual blue-colored shirts but he was a fan of flannels by the looks of it. Katsuki for the most part didn't need new cloths but he has just come back getting a pair of new dumbbells that weigh at least 25 pounds each. After the All Might training they probably didn't weigh much to him. Before he could think of anything else as if on cue the boy's stomachs let out a grumble. For the first time today they all let out a tiny laugh together. 1.25 p.m. After a shared meal of ramen, the boys gathered their belongings. But before they could do anything else a small crowd had actually began to form near them. It became clear who these people were, fans, the son of Endeavor and the top two winners of the sports festival all sharing a meal together in public. Totally not setting of any alarms or any sus looks. As they began to walk the boys were being approached by several civilians. A few had asked for a picture with them but they declined. Izuku respectfully declined. He may have a confidence boost on his side but when it came to the media he became a bit of a mess. Shoto and Katsuki were not interested at all. A perplexing look on Izuka's part they agreed on something. Some people wanted simple to congratulate them on their performance, others only gave them a happy nod. Well, 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 if it isn't quirkless Izuku. That stopped Izuku from moving as he went cold for a moment. Katsuki had a look of pure feral rage and Shepard looked about ready to pull his gun and shoot whoever the fuck just called Izuku quirkless. Todoroki was the only one who had remained confused but then he recalled Midoriya being quirkless for most of his life. They all turned to face the arrival of who had just called Izuku quirkless. They were met with what could only be described as a league of childhood bullies. The group contained the worst of worst from Aldera, the main tormentors of childhood bullies for Izuku. They each had a smug grin on their face. The fuck did you extras just call him? The raged look hadn't disappeared from Bakugo's face if anything it only grew as he was reminded of all the shit his brother had to deal with. He was doing his best not to use his quirk but by gods was it hard. Exactly what he is, a quirkless thing. 
One of the bullies said honestly I'm surprised he was even allowed in UA he probably got in on a bribe. Not very heroic if you ask me. Back Hugo I twitched. All the times these three would constantly call his brother it or a thing. It pissed him the fuck off wanting each time to murder them. You fuckers don't know jack shit. He got into UA just like he said he would. Meanwhile you three couldn't even make the goddamn cut for applying in general studies. A statement that made the three of them back off but only for a second. They wanted to continue this torment at their own risk. Oh please we're too good for UA. Not even worth our time to apply to that trash school. Trash school. The irritated look on his face only grew. Ha. Huh. Is that what you called it when you found out your applications were denied because you failed the entrance exam? Or maybe it's because you knew none of you could last a day in UA. The group laughed oh please if UA is willing to let a villain and thing be part of their school then maybe we dodged a bullet. Izuku turned and glared at them. No one calls his brother a villain. Bakugo gritted his teeth in frustration. Shepard himself had balled up his fist about ready to lose it. The duo looked about ready to lunge at those three when they stopped. Fuck off. The trio had turned to see Shoto speak up for the first time. The contempt in his voice was showing. Midoriya isn't a thing he's a human being and he's my friend. And unlike you three clowns he got into Yue by his own merit. The very same tone of rage from yesterday had filled Shoto. This outburst caused one of them to form a smug grin your friends with a quirkless. Wow what is wrong with you? I bet he's trying to get favors from the number two hero's son. The glare Shoto gave that bully was a feral one. Bad enough they were insulting him now they were implying he was friends for some cheap favors. So what if I am his friend? He's not quirkless or did you not see the sports festival how he managed to beat me? Izuku was now looking at Shoto. He was defending his just like Katsuki had down all those years. But Shoto wasn't done just yet not by the long shot it seems. And what would you three even know about being a hero? From the short time of knowing you all I can say is none of you would last a minute through the hero course of UA. Midoriya is easily one of the top two students of his class. He could probably take you all down without even using his quirk. I bet you three got into some mediocre school because UA wouldn't waste their time with quirkist people like you. That definitely caused the three bullies to back up as any bravado they had went out the window. They knew they lost this fight and they really didn't want to test their luck with the top three winners of the sports festival. Suddenly one of the bullies' parents came up. He had taken one look at Izuku and knew who he was why would a mall allow a quirkless here? Honestly why doesn't it just take a swan dive off a room and hope to be reborn with a quirk? The bullies were about to make a comment had they not frozen up when they were enveloped in a murderous aura. You motherfucker. Shepard was at his boiling point right now. Who the fuck do you think you are to say that to my son? Shepard raised his voice as a few people were now looking by. You're that thing's father. Must be a genetic defect then for you to have a quirkless the parent suddenly couldn't talk as his airway has been cut off with shifter's hand wrapped around his throat. He let out an unfamiliar growl that caused Izuku and Bekugo to tense him. They couldn't remember the last time them I ever heard their old man growl like an animal. But Shifter wasn't a hero right now, he was a pissed off father. Sappy heroic speech and morality out the window. No one was going to continue calling his son a quirkless object. You better hope I never see any of again. The only reason I'm stopping myself from crushing that windpipe of yours is because it would ruin the good day me and my sons have been having. Now piss the fuck off before I reconsider letting you off with a mercy. He let go of his grip and tossed the man to the floor. He scurried up to his feet as the other three bullies joined him but not before they heard a laughter coming from Izuku. He'd finally spoken and looked all of towards their direction. He gave them all a very Bakugo-like smirk it's hilarious seeing you all piss yourselves like this. I mean you all ridiculed me for being quirkless but now I know why. You're all afraid of me. Afraid that a quirkless was gonna leave you fucking extras in the dust. Well news flash I have and I'm only just getting started. I'm going to be the number one hero and people will remember what I did. But you people, no one will even bother realizing who you fuckers are. And honestly you're not even remotely worth it because I know what it means to be a hero. He let out a chuckle I don't even feel pity for you any of you really. None of you are even worth any of my effort whatsoever. Izuku turned and began to walk away but not before flicking them off. Shoto and Katsuki went to his side. While Anton still gave that group the look to death as they all backed up and ran away. Growing up, quirkism was a given for him. All the constant comments of how you can't amount to anything or you're just a quirkless thing were always constant reminders of how he didn't have a quirk. There had been times where Izuku didn't want to continue being a hero, but Shepard and Bakugo were always there to remind him he can be a hero. Hell they even gave him a reminder that All Might himself admitted that it isn't the quirk that makes a hero, it's the person. It was always reassuring to know he had people that supported him, it's what really got him through everything. He had learned to stand up to himself thanks to his brother, but that never stopped his family from sticking up for him. Well it was fair, given how many times Izuku defended Bakugo when people would comment how he could never be a hero due to his attitude. But things were different now, he had finally gotten the one thing he wished he could have the same connection that Kakin and Shep had, a quirk. 
It gave him a much better boost in his confidence to know that he wasn't some quirkless loser anymore. That his chances of being a hero would improve. So what those people said to him, it didn't bother him because he wasn't that person anymore. He was better than them and he made sure to let them know. Izuku took a moment to sit on a nearby bench, Katsuki and Shoto by his side. Thanks both of you, for looking out for me. Midoriya said with a small smile. Katsuki gave Izuku a shoulder punch of course I'm gonna stand up for you. You're my brother never forget that Izuku. And you're my friend Midoriya. My first ever friend. It would make me a bad friend if I didn't defend you. At least that's how I believe friendship works. But what I meant is true you are my friend Midoriya. Shoto said giving him a reassuring look. It made Izuku return the smile back. Thanks Kachin, thanks Todoroki. They both nodded oh Bakugo you are also my friend I hope you know that. Todoroki said in a nonchalant voice. Bakugo gave him an irritated look we are not friends Candy Kane. Shoto now had a confused look we both stood up for Midoriya. And we were about ready to commit murder in public. Do friends not do that for each other? We stood up for Izuku. Now shut the fuck up half and half. Katsuki growled but deep down he was okay with the fact that someone else stood up for his brother. You're right we did stand up for Midoriya. I suppose that makes us best friends rather than regular friends. Wait no Midoriya is my best friend I apologize Bakugo but I hope I didn't hurt your feelings by saying that. Oh boy that sent Bakugo into a smoke nostril look. He was about ready to lunge at Todoroki had it not been for Izuku's laughter. You guys are too much thanks. Shepard had followed the boys after that incident. Gods it infuriated him how Izuku had to relive that experience again. Being reminded he was quirkless, it made his very core boil. Now Shepard was a very patient man but he had flaws. He overthought of everything. He had a lot of bottled up trauma. Or sometimes he didn't know what he did was enough for his friends and his family. But seeing his son go through all that quirkus comments and being told to be out down he had a new flaw of his, murder. He wanted to beat that scumbag to a bloody pulp. He didn't want to leave any recognizable features behind. He let that image continue to play in his head. The battered and bruised body of the man who had just told his son to kill himself. It wasn't a healthy thing to indulge in. Shepard didn't want to go down that path again. But then he when he saw Bakugo and Todoroki stand up for his son it put him at ease. Even more when he saw Izuku gave them a very good breakdown. And he was right. Izuku was better than those three. Mid-conversation of seeing the boys argue whether or not Bakugo and Todoroki are friends Shepard received a call from Nenzu. Knowing he only calls when it's important he told the boys to not leave the area and to look out for Izuku on the off chance that those scumbags return. He looked up at the large mall window ceiling and shifted his way up to the rooftops. Answering he heard the rat god's infamous voice. Salutations Anton. Good to speak to one of my favorite humans. I do hope today is finding you well and good. Nenzu asked as he was in a rather cheerful mood today. Or as cheerful as Anton could hear he could never read the rat god. Yes today is certainly a good day I'll admit. Just spending time with my sons. Shepard replied as he sat on the rooftop. Still needing to cool off for a bit. That's excellent to hear. Congratulations to both of them on winning first and second place. Their battle has been all over the news today and has done well to cause all of the staff here to reconsider adding some additional paddings to their rooms. Shepard could only laugh at that last part. Of course the staff members are only now just realizing the form of chaotic energy those two resonate. Wait until they find out that Shoto is now a part of the family. But pleasantries aside Anton, I've excellent news for you. Several pro heroes have reached out to me and it seems as though they're going to do joint agencies for this year's internships. He took a sip from his tea as he wasn't finished only a few dozen mind you but several of them include single rank digit heroes. It appears as though your plan worked better than you intended it to my friend. Nedzu finished explaining in a cheerful tone. When he found out the real reason for Shifter being in charge of security he'd been hopeful that Anton's idea worked. And so it did. Far better than expected because while these agencies maybe be few the ones that joined had enough to make an impact on society for the better. This year's internship will be far better and it's all thanks to Shifter and Nedzu made sure he knew it. Thank you principal. Truth be told I was a little worried so many heroes weren't going to work well together. Remember the incident with Mount Lady as a prime example. He'd have to remember to cross her, Kamui Woods and Death Arms off any potential interns list. I hope the UA staff won't be so overburdened with all the extra papers works however. Knowing full well that he unintentionally gave them extra work on their vacations. Oh yeah the staff may have his head for this. Nenzu let out a cackle of a laugh that almost caused him to fall of his chair. My dear friend considering how you and I run their paychecks and the entire bills of this campus I don't think they have much to complain about. What's the worst they could do? File a complaint for increased pay. Perish the idea of that happening. Ain't that the truth? Sure let's try and lecture one of the two people in charge of paying the bills at UA. What could go wrong? I do sometimes forget I have that power over them. Perhaps it would improve moral if I offered the staff a raise. There had been a brief second of silence before both of them let out a maniacal laugher. 
Yeah, giving the UA staff a raise when hell freezes over. After whipping the tears in his eyes and regaining his composure Nedzu finally spoke well Anton I won't keep you. We can discuss more about work away from your free time. For now I only wanted to wish you the best as always my friend. Nedzu was about to end the call but Shifter didn't let him just yet. Before you go, may I confide in you for a bit Nedzu. There was something that had been on his mind since yesterday. An odd request Nedzu thought. He knew Shifter didn't doubt himself as much but he would occasionally ask Nedzu for his advice. Normally he'd ask a racerhead so whatever help he wants must be on a personal level. But of course, what troubles you my friend? I assume All Might has told you about AFO being alive. Nedzu frowned yes it terrifies me to know that Japan's most dangerous villain is still alive and now posing a threat. Nedzu finding out AFO was alive. Well it was one of the few times his calm demeanor had broken. Any sane woman or man should be afraid of the damage that monster can do. Added by the fact that the only possible person that could stand up to him only barely escaped with his life during their last encounter. He worried for the future of Japan and hero society alike. Was it really a surprise that even Shifter was afraid of the future threat in the horizon? Did I do the right thing then? What I set in motion, it could very well threaten everything I revere in my life. Also that's what this is about. It's only been a day and Anton wanted clarity. Clarity at the fact that he unintentionally discovered the existence of a FO. This put the heroes at the advantage. Now they could better prepare a counter-attack against him when he makes his return. The problem is there's no way of knowing when he would come back but one thing is for certain. All Might would be their main and best defense against him. However, now that a FO knew he was found it was hard to say how he would announce his return. More so, Nedzu was unsure if Yagi would be strong enough to finish the job, running only at three hours. Then there was Izuku. His use of OFA was still too new. He lacked the experience All Might had acquired, but more importantly he was still just a child. A child who has a lot of potential to be an amazing hero but sending a kid to go and fight the greatest threat Japan would ever know. That was something that made Nedzu blood boil. A small bit of Anton has been rubbing him on him. It was his job as principal to ensure the kids were safe. Dooming Izuku to fight AFO was something he wasn't going to allow even if it killed him. There's no way you could have possibly known Anton. Didn't I? Sometimes I feel as though I'm too brash. I need to think more before I act. And now look at what I did. Found out about AFO. But now I put my sons in danger. Shepard's eyes were filled with regret he wishes he could go back in a machine and prevent himself from finding out about AFO. A hard reminder that his actions will have consequences. You did what you thought was best at the time. I know for a fact this is more so concern for your sons than anything else. Shifter sat back and rested his head on an air generator at the roof of the mall. Yeah, Izuku and Bakugo are a team through and through. I'm not going to pretend like AFO doesn't know about Izuku being All Might's successor, but Katsuki has always stood by him no matter what. If Midoriya is gonna fight AFO, then Bakugo will without a doubt join in. Shepard nodded at that point I doubt even I could stop them from fighting. He sadly knew that if it came down to it, even he couldn't stop that those two from fight against AFO. Is it worth reminding myself that perhaps, I do not know everything after all? Shepard had a hand over his hair. All that paranoia and it came to attack the two things he values more than his own life. Anton Nedzu voice has become more stern. The same voice he'd come to know whenever he gave speeches during graduation ceremony. This wasn't your fault. AFO would have made his return regardless of your discovery. But thanks to you he's lost the element of surprise. Now All Might has a better chance at defeating him. But most importantly you've given us a chance to form some sort of offense or defense against him. Nedzu eyes sparkled. He was far from done. My friend you continue to do so much for us. Don't let this one moment fill you with doubt. I've known you for too long to realize that doubt is an uncomfortable thing for you. You're the best information broker Japan has to offer. And it's only thanks to you that so many heroes have done better. Now promise to do better for yourself and your family. Sometimes Shifter needed to remind himself that he wasn't alone anymore. There are days where he wishes he knew Nedzu in his past life. How many times he felt that Nedzu would have been able to pull him out of whatever terrible shit mission he had to do. More so, he was fully confident in the fact that the rat could easily have his entire family swept under a rug if he ever found out what they did to him. He was always grateful to the him and his divine patience, gods know he can relate on that part. But he made the right call in asking the principal for an ear to listen to. He already felt a bit better thanks to him. Thanks Principal Nedzu, I needed to hear that. Nedzu was smiling on that the other end of the line at your pleasure my friend. If you or your sons ever need anything let me know. I'm always happy to help you out. Shepard gave him a huffed response but he felt better than he'd felt all of last night. When he hung up and got to his feet he let the wind blow on his face as he closed his eyes for a moment. When he opened them he remembered that things would be alright. And he wasn't in this fight alone. After that ordeal Shepard went back to see the boys had stopped arguing and had transitioned to Bakugo listening to music while Todoroki had continued to chat with Midori. Judging by their looks no one had bothered them so he breathed sigh of relief. 
Realizing that Todoroki needed a few more things for his new room, Shepard noticed a Japanese-style furniture store. Bakugo and Midoriya chose to wait outside though, mostly because they had everything they needed for today. From new merchandise to a few extra cloths and several workout equipment, and they realized this was more so for Todoroki rather than themselves and each of them wanted to give Todoroki some space with the old man. Shoto went into the store with Shepard. The odd thing was this was the first time the two of them had been alone since breakfast. The majority of the time Shoto had largely stuck by Izuku. He could tell Bakugo still had an aura of don't talk to me. And it was nice. Chatting with Midoriya just felt right. Considering how yesterday he saw an angry side of Midoriya it felt good to just see his positive attitude. The thing that was still on his mind was how Midoriya had told it was his quirk not his father's. He went the extra mile despite the fact that there was a possibility that Midoriya could have lost yesterday. He had been willing to risk the match for him. Someone who had just declared war not too long. And now a day later here he had been. Chatting with Midoriya for the majority of the day. Getting to know him and his father a bit more. Right Midoriya had called him his friend several points today. He'd never had that before, someone he could trust outside of his family. There was a part inside of Shoto that wanted to continue to learn more about Shepard and his family. He wanted to fit in. Not just with Midoriya but Bakugo too. He was aware that would be a challenge. Todoroki knew Bakugo saw him as a potential rival to being a hero. Perhaps when Bakugo is fully recovered they could train with their quirks. He'd heard and seen enough of him fighting alongside Kirishima and Midoriya to realize he was more a man of action rather than words. Tomorrow was supposed to be the day for them to have a quick checkup on Recovery Girl to further heal their injuries. Maybe once they were both at 100% they could have a light sparing match. Surely nothing could go wrong with having two strong hitting quirk users go at each other. As they began to look through the store Todoroki was reminded of a few items that he had at his home. There was a desk that definitely caught his attention as Shepard noticed he eyed at that particular item for a good few seconds. Next to it was a match floor chair. He'd recognized that kind of brand as it was the one his family had used for a long time. Several floor lamp designs could also be seen as Shoto had grabbed a few but he put them back on the shelf. What fully caused Todoroki to stop in his tracks was seeing a set of floor mats. They were the perfect size for Shepard's guest room. But it isn't right that Shoto request Shifter to change his home. It was nice experience being alone with Shepard, and he'd been gracious all day. But he needed to come back to reality. It would be incredibly rude and disrespect for Shoto ask Shifter to buy all these things for him. The extra cloths, shoes and school materials he didn't mind one bit. But those belongings were a necessity. These furniture items weren't. Sensei why are we looking at Japanese furniture? I don't think Midoriya or Bakugo would be interested in any of these items. Todoroki asked turning to Shepard trying his best to hide the bit of pain inside of him. He would have liked to buy these things but perhaps he'll stick with the items he has at Endeavor's home. Anton had looked at Shoto the entire time, wondering why he hadn't asked for any of those items. He would have been more than happy to buy these things for Shoto. So he was as a little sad when Shoto began to put everything back to their respective shelves. But when he heard Shoto's questions he saw the root of the problem. All this time Todoroki was under the impression these items were for his boys. But more than that it seems as though he didn't want to impose on changing Anton's house a bit. For your room kid. Shepard replied looking at every possible item on the counters and walls. My. My room. Shoto sputtered around with open eyes. But that's your guest room not my room sensei. Shepard now had a confused look over his face. Kid. I'm gonna be your legal guardian remember. So that means I'm gonna provide for you. And that quote unquote guest room is your room. Now and forever. Figured you'd want to change it so it could a bit more at ease for you. He stopped looking at the items in the store and then turned his attention at Todoroki. This is a big change in your life remember, so if there's anything I can do to make your transition easier just tell me. Shoto's insecurity about coming off as rude were all for nothing. Shifter was okay with compromising for him. Surely he didn't mean it the pieces then came together in Shoto's mind. Of course he meant it. He's willing to have dinner with his father for him. That should have been the biggest hint for Shoto. And now here they were in a furniture store, talking not as student and teacher but as guardian and ward. That brought a small quiver to his bottom lip. He could feel Shepard's hand on his shoulder giving him a reassuring look. Would it be possible to change the hardwood to floor mats of, of my room then? Anton gave Shoto a smile. 5.57 p.m. The rest of the experience in the mall went well without any major events happening. Shepard figured it was time to go back home once new clothes, workout equipment, and a few hero merchandise had been added to his credit card bill. The power of infinite money was truly a blessing for Anton. While leaving they were once again recognized by civilians. This time Shifter didn't want a repeat of earlier so he used his quirk on the boys to shift them close to his truck. One angry dad moment was enough for him thank you. Once they made their way back home, 
They grabbed all the bags and put them in their respective rooms. The new furniture that they'd gotten Shoto could wait for a later day as Anton reminded them that they would have dinner with Shoto's family soon. So in the meantime Shoto sat in Izuka's room to chat with him. Bakugo chose to go to his room and just lay down for a bit, preparing himself for the 1,000 questions Isahat's siblings would ask him. While Shepard went upstairs to his office to continue some paperwork, he assured the boys if they needed anything to give them a call and he'd be there. 7.23 p.m. Shepard and the boys got out of the Camaro. There in front of them stood Shoto's home. Well, dinner with the Todorokis would surely turn out well. Shepard Sensei, why do you hate my father? It was something that had been on Shoto's mind. He found it difficult to imagine Shepard hating anyone. Despite his teacher's reserved nature he could see just how much each UA staff member respected him, even All Might held Shifter in high regard. And he in turn would always be there to make the workload easier, be it in school or for patrols. So it just didn't make sense why there was hero that he held disdain for me. Two reasons kid. When your father and I first met he assumed I was a vigilante. You'd be surprised at how few people actually know I exist. And your father has a history with hating vigilantes. That night is overused my quirk saving some people. And a small side effect. I get migraines if I ever push myself too far. He drove as he let car pass by him. Needless to say your father took advantage of my weakened state and tossed me in jail. The fuck? Izuku and Katsuki asked, or rather yelled, in the back of the Camaro. Their old man was as thrown in jail like a criminal that's not gonna bold well for tonight. The boys had been asked to be on their best behavior for Shoto's sake. It was a miracle that Shepard was on his best behavior. But after that bit of information it wouldn't surprise him as his sons went for murder on Endeavor. It got sorted out thanks to Detective Tsukachi. Oh by the way I forgot to mention Naomasa Tsukachi he's a good person kid. He was my first friend when I came to Japan and truth be told he's one of the reasons why I chose to call this place my home. And he did look out for my boys when I was recovering after the USJ incident. Shepard was slowly giving Todoroki a small message that if he ever needs anything there's someone else he can rely on besides himself or a racer. Shoto gave Shepard a nod and an apologetic look. He had no way of knowing that Endeavor had treated him like some thug. And here he was about to have dinner with him. He can only hope things would be so bad tonight. And what's the second reason? Shifter took a breath. You're not the only one who's been hurt by his family kid. I know what it's like to be turned into something you don't want to be. And what it's like to have nothing but hate and resentment for the man you call father. Deep down Shifter saw a bit of himself in Shoto. Being abused by those that he called family. Being forced to live up to a legacy that is more of a burden than anything else. And that crushing feeling of being completely alone. Begging for someone to help you. Only help never came to Anton. He wasn't going to let Shoto be a part of that path. His own family caused him pain. Being turned into something you don't want to be. And the tone of his voice. It was filled with anger that he saw earlier when Shifter was defending Midori. Shoto has turned to see if his sons knew and but the looks of it they knew more than he was letting on. He wanted to ask him more but before he had the chance they'd arrive at his home. Getting out of the Camaro, Shoto opened the main door. Unsure of what to wear the boys and Shepard dressed in something familiar. Midoriya, Bakugo, and Todoroki choosing to wear a black button shirt. Shifter however chose to remain in gear. Taking of his jacket as got past the front door. Once they got close to the door, Shoto opened it again and saw that Endeavor was already waiting for them. The atmosphere immediately tensed up. Shoto, Father, Shifter, Endeavor, Izuku and Katsuki gave each other a side-eyed look. A part of them wanted to say something but they'd rather not make it any more awkward and they promised to be on good behavior for Shoto's sake. The other part of that wanted to lunge at Endeavor and beat the living daylights out of him for throwing their old man in jail however. But they were saved by the bell when they heard a very cheery voice. Shoto, a white-haired girl had jumped to give Shoto a hug. She wore glasses and her hair had red streaks. So I know it's been a day but it feels like it's been weeks that I saw you. How was your sleepover? She asked readjusting her glasses. Shoto slowly gave her a hug back it was nice Fayumi. We Shoto could feel the glare from his father. Thankfully Shifter was there to return an equally terrifying glare. We hung out and went to the mall. It was good experience. Shoto smiled at hearing that's great to hear Shoto. She turned to see the boys. She liked recognized Izuku. You're the boy who fought Shoto, Midoriya was it. Izuku immediately went into a sputter frankly bowing up and down. Oh yes I'm Izuku Midoriya. Sorry about hurting your brother. We were both giving it our all in the sports festival. Still I didn't mean to cause him harm. I think he's a strong person with a good quirk I just... Midoriya. Deku. Son. Hearing three people call out his name he froze up. He'd unintentionally went on a bit of a mumble. It's fine I know it was just a match. A good one too. Fayumi had given a small laugh and besides I saw your match at the final you two really blew the roof of the place. Oh um thank you really. We may have gone overboard but it was a good finale battle. Izuku nervously said while rubbing the back of his neck. Perhaps we should move this conversation to the dining room. 
Introductions can be done there. Endeavor spoke with intensity on his face he walked away from the group but not before he and Shifter gave each other a glare. After taking off their shoes they followed at a distance. The Todoroki household was largely Japanese style. The walkways were made by finely polished wood in the garden. Not a bad collection of plants and pure white stones laced the ground. Shifter could feel security cameras moving left to right. He really shouldn't be surprised. He remembered it took him a while to get past his security systems one time when he was trying to find information on the Todorokis. They made their way to a large slide and door revealing an equally large dinner table that was filled with a variety of foods. Sitting on one of the corners was a spike white-haired boy who had worn a shirt that said back on the front side but had the words front on the back side. He gave a hateful look at Endeavor for a split second before turning his attention to see everyone else come in. So these are Shoto's friends? The boy asked with quite a bit of curiosity. Yup, Fayumi answered for Shoto and their dad is here as well, taking a seat next to him so he wouldn't have to sit next to Endeavor. The boys sat next to each other, Enji siding at one end of the table while Anton sat across from him. This meant they would be constantly giving each other death glares, a perfect start for tonight. Once everyone got themselves seated Fayumi spoke up so first off thank you for coming in on such short notice. But I was really looking forward to seeing Shoto's friends. So why don't we do introductions? My name is Fayumi I'm Shoto's older sister. And this here is Natsuo, Shoto's older brother. Natsuo raised his head and gave a small wave hey there. Nice to meet you both, I'm Izuku Midoriya. And he's Katsuki Bakugo, my older brother. There was a small twitch inside Izuku's brain that wanted to slap him for calling his brother a name that wasn't Kakin. Bakugo gave Izuku a side look. Even he felt it odd being called by his full name. What my little brother said yeah. Trying not to sound rude as best he can. The two Todoroki siblings nodded as Natsuo and Fayumi turned to their right and you must be their dad correct? Natsuo asked. Shepard averted his gaze from Enji to address the elder Todoroki son. Yes Anton Shepard is my name. You can refer to me as either or I won't take offense to it. He replied with the first smile he mustered since entering the house. Natsuo cocked an eyebrow wait Shepard. I think I remember Shoto talking about you once. Said you're a good teacher and how you actively help students. Your brother gives me too much credit. I'm just a simple teacher. Shifter said with pure sincerity trying his best not to let his anger at Endeavor show. That caused Natsuo to stare back at him for a bit wondering if this guy was anything like Endeavor. You and Endeavor work together by the way. Absolutely not. Endeavor and Shifter spoke at the same time. They then looked at each other with horror realizing they just agreed on something. For a moment the entire table sat in silence from the outburst but Fayumi broke the awkward tension by reminding them not to let the food get cold. She reassured them that she wouldn't take offense if they didn't eat everything. The first part of dinner was met with silence. Only the sound of everyone's chopsticks could be heard. Well awkward silence it is. At least until Izuku got a good taste of Fayumi cooking. This fried chicken is amazing. A piece of chicken grasped between his chopsticks as he scarfed it down savoring the flavor. I'm so glad you liked it. Natsuo hummed I'm agreement Fayumi always been good at cooking. Even before our housekeeper had to retire due to a back injury. She gave her brother a smile hey now you can cook too, your meals are delicious. You cooked for us from time to time. Shoto had stopped eating to look at his older brother did I eat your food too then Natsuo. Not that I'm aware of, I always tend to go a bit heavy with seasonings. I remember you not liking too many spices on your meals. Shoto looked at his bowl of food. Spicy food was never his favorite but he only remembered telling Natsuo that in passing. His expression may be blank but deep down he was happy at the thought of his older brother remembering his taste in food. Besides, Endeavor did always control your diet, just like every single detail in your life. Natsuo commented with pure spite. Someone had turned the switch and cut off any and all sound on the world. The uncomfortable silence in the dining table had returned. Izuku could practically hear his heartbeat in his ears. Even Bakugo had to take a moment as he stopped eating. As the temperature of the room plummeted, Endeavor finished chewing whatever was in his mouth and swallowed before looking at Natsuo. Both to them looking directly in each other's eyes but Enji was unfazed. He didn't even seem to care that Natsuo spoke to him arrogantly. Shepard took one look at Natsuo and saw his hand turn white from how hard he was clenching his fists. Perhaps if you cook properly next time I wouldn't mind eating your food, like I'd ever cook for you. Natsuo muttered. Endeavor gave a scoff I'd hoped your college life would teach you maturity. It would appear as though I was wrong. The vein on his forehead grew. Natsuo looked about ready to slam his fist on the table and yell but stopped when he heard Shepard speak. Endeavor, your right wrist did you get injured today on patrol? Shifter asked having put his chopstick down. Endeavor looked at the other end of the table. And that was a very small twitch in his eyes. Shifter was pushing it, and but the looks of it he didn't care. If so I do hope it didn't hinder with your hero work today. There had been a pause before Inji replied it seems I was careless today in my actions as a hero. 
I failed to notice the injury until it was too late. The swelling had stopped but that didn't mean Shifter didn't leave a bruise when he had a death grip on him yesterday. Shifter let out a faint chuckle and smiled back at Endeavor. I'd assume a hero of your level would be more aware of his surroundings. An injury would only make you an unwelcome burdened out in the field. Well everyone makes mistakes. On their actions Shepard dropped the smile as his eyes sharpened like daggers and what they choose to say that could lead to more mistakes. He took a sip from his tea that Fayumi had made, his gaze never once leaving Endeavor's. Endeavor sat there in silence, being reminded of the concept of fear yesterday. Sitting across from him was someone who wasn't afraid to threaten him or call him out on his bullshit. I suppose next time I'll consider my options more. Thoroughly, the two pros went back to eating in contempt of each other. Matsuo sat there slack jaw. Any anger that he had just disappeared. This guy was making Endeavor uncomfortably and wasn't afraid to talk back to him. Usually it's the other way around whenever someone chats with his father. He'd never seen his father back down like that. From the amount of villains he's put behind bars it made him have a backbone made of steel. But the man sitting right next to him broke that spine in less than a second. Did he have some sort of leverage over Endeavor? As everyone returned to eating their meals Izuku really enjoyed the chicken. He began to analyze the taste but that was put on hold on when Katsuki elbowed him in the side. Turns out Fayumi made a really good mapo tofu that Bakugo didn't want the nerds mumbling to ruin its taste. Meanwhile Izuku saw Shoto had resigned himself to eat in silence. He was probably still trying to think on how to bring up the fact that he'll have a parental figure in his life. Halfway through eating his chicken, he noticed something about Natsuo outfit. It took him a moment but when he did he immediately perked up. Natsuo, I like your shirt it's really cool. Natsuo had some sashimi stuffed in his mouth. His facial expression was the equivalent of a deer freezing on headlights. That definitely earned him a snicker from his older sister. He swallowed his food so he could speak properly um thanks. I mean they're a good brand but my sister thinks they're lame. Are you kidding you and I have the same brand. My personal favorite is the pure white one that reads. Shirt. Natsuo whispered as the light bulb in his brain began to blink. Oh my god finally. Someone gets it. Izuku exclaimed in a happy tone. He'd always been teased at his lack of fashion by Bakugo. How the messy hair, the simple shirt and the pants made him look quote-unquote plain. I mean what would he know? He literally wears black skull outfits and tang tops 24-7 he should cut him some slack but no that would be a universal favor wouldn't it? Dude you have no idea how many of these shirts I have in my closet. There was joy in his voice for the first time as opposed to the hostility and monotonous voice that he had spoken for most of tonight. More so he had a happy expression rather than a silent deadpan one. Although I did consider making my own brand as a kid, it didn't work out well. He laughed nervously as he rubbed the back of his neck. Izuku's eye went full wide eye by make your own brand. Do you mean grabbing a random shirt, putting tap on it writing some random word on it? That question was met with Natsuo laughing dude bring it and he offered him a high five across the table which Izuku happily accepted. The two of them spent the next minutes just reminiscing about their lack of taste in clothing. Natsuo even offered to show Izuku his room after dinner so he could have someone else relate on his clothing taste which cause almost resulted in his using his quirk out of sheer excitement. Fayumi let out a chuckle great Natsuo found someone who shares his love of meme shirts. Who would have known being the older sibling can be so taxing sometimes? Tell me about it. Katsuki commented. What's that supposed to mean? Izuku, Shoto and Natsuo all said with perplexed looks. Honestly sometimes it feels like I'm four years older than Izuku, despite only being four months older. Bakugo gave a gleeful smirk of brotherly betrayal to Izuku. Well usually all I have to do is threaten them to take away their favorite meal privileges for a week. That gets them in line for the most part. Letting out a mischievous laugh. F-U-Y-U-M-I. A with Izuku all have to do is give him a noogie. It's his main tickle spot. K-I-C-C-H-A-N. Fayumi couldn't help but loosen her shoulders a bit. These were Shoto's new friends, his first real friends. For the past month she'd asked him about his days in schools. Most of the time he'd only respond with a few words. As the days went by Shoto began to speak a bit more about his classmates and their quirks. But it was all a competition for him, proving that he was objectively stronger than all of them. Something that her father had forced him to see life as. Well if these were Shoto's first friends she wasn't going to let this opportunity pass to know them better so I you like spicy food. She sheepishly commented as she saw Bakugo pull up another plate of mapo tofu. Katsuki looked her in the eyes. He could tell she was trying to let them all have one simple dinner. The nerd was chatting up a storm with Icy Hot's brother. But half and half had barely said a word since he got here. Well least he could do is answer a couple of her questions. Yeah, at first it helped with quirk. But as I ate more spicy food it just became a part of my diet. Your cooking's not bad by the way. You went with really fresh peppercorns didn't you? Well actually it was my first time making that dish. Natsuo usually does the spicy meals but when Shoto texted me you liked spicy food I'd figured this would be good practice. She nervously laughed I'll admit it took a while but I think I got the recipe right. Thankfully I also found a good dubinjong material. 
S. Alright. I kinda expected you to have good ingredients at the ready. You ever try spicy curry before? She shook her head in disagreement. You should tell Isahat to give you that Mapo tofu recipe. Could give you some spicy recipes in return. Akugo munched on his meal. He won't admit but if she made a better Mapo tofu than he did. He remembered how long it took him to learn how to make a good spicy meal. He mentally laughed at being reminded how he accidentally burned the old fart's tongue once. I'd appreciated that. She clapped her hands in acknowledgement. Wanted to know more about their family Bakugo gave her a bit of information about them. How big All Might's fan they are. The two of them wanting to be a future team. How the old fart taught them how to fight at an early age and told how he teaches not just fighting but also taught him how to cook. Normally Katsuki wouldn't be this talkative but she made him a good dinner. The least he could do was as answer a few questions for her. Natsuo finished his sashami but moved on eating some of Fayumiya's sushi. He could swear her secret quirk must have been cooking. So um Shepard how come your son's name aren't the same as yours? Shepard stopped eating to clear his throat when he turned to respond to Natsu's question that something I let them decide actually shift or reply. Their first real choice was trusting me to be their parent. Figured they should also have the choice to keep their birth parents' names. Besides Izuku Shepard and Katsuki Shepard. Such a boring name coming from a boring old man. He responded with a warm smile at the older Todoroki sibling, trying his best not to let his resentment get the better of him. But Endeavor had a comment say about that. I would have assumed someone of your prestige family would take some pride in his surname. I heard your family funds a large portion of the US hero courses. I can't understand why you'd leave such a life to come here in Japan. It sounded more like a hostile interrogation. No doubt Endeavor must have put two and two together on realizing the name Shepard came from the US. The boys stopped eating as they could see their old man mask the pure hatred behind his face with a smile. Finding out the truth of what his family did to him made it completely understandable why he'd never want anyone to take on his name. Oh you know the old saying, you can choose your friends but you can't choose your family. Besides why would I waste my time in the US? I can do more good here. By good work do you mean vigilantism? And any attempt at Shepard masking to be nice was dropped there's maybe some differences between underground heroes and vigilantes endeavor. Besides in the end both with to achieve the same goes, helping others, the legal usage of their quirks, morally questionable tactics, and a disregard for the law. Endeavor listed a few of his reason for hating on vigilantes though it seems the only difference is acquiring a hero ID. No doubt they could easily forge one, another illegal action. I suppose you would be authority on the subject of taboo actions for society. Perhaps you could further educate me on what society views as illegal actions. Natsuo and Fayumi sat wide-eyed and shocked. Did he know? Did this guy know about the quirk marriage? They both looked to Shoto who could only look down trying his best to avoid the uncomfortable looks he was getting. They gave their father a glance and he looked about ready to rip Shepard's head off but when they looked at Anton there wasn't a single ounce of fear or regret with this implication. Endeavor did not hide the scowl. The vein in his neck grew. It was a miracle he didn't activate his quirk right then and there. It would be a waste of time to try and educate someone such as yourself. Our views are far too different, as are our teaching methods by the looks of it. Yes I try not to cause quirk exhaustion on my students. I hear it may interrupt their quirk growth and affect their bodies mentally and physically. Shifter said to Endeavor with pure spite. Shoto shook for a second and his siblings definitely caught that comment. There wasn't any doubt about it. He knew the truth about their family and by the looks of it so did his sons given the small look of concern that were directed at Shoto. Finishing his meal endeavor merely let the silence stand. Is that how your family trained you then? Pushing you past your limit each day. I'd say their training worked given how effective you are. Or have you only been demonstrating luck rather than skill? There was a pause that caused the air to thicken. It was as if a lightning storm was about to strike, fury and all. Shifter snapped his chopsticks in half. His two sons gulped, trained more like he was forced to fight every day for his life. Had the body modifications, which he told him what he performed after so many brutal matches. It had always been a reminder what his own family did to him. Would you like to run that by me again? NG Todoroki. Perhaps this time I'll put more effort into slamming you against a wall. You are welcome to try. Only this time be prepared for me to strike back. The tension had just about reached its boiling point when Shoto coughed to get everyone's attention. Sensei, I'm ready to tell them. Shoto said in a bit of a hushed whisper. By the looks of it he was ready to initiate the second reason they were here. Hearing his ward's voice immediately calmed the anger inside Anton down. Natsuo and Fayumi were the only ones at the table that were confused. I'll be blunt and honest. They know about Endeavor's quirk marriage, about mom and about how intense my upbringing was. Shepard is my teacher and he's someone I've come to trust. It's because of him and his son that I've begun to use my fire. He ignored Endeavor's surprised face. Yesterday I asked if he could adopt me. He stopped to see both of them had a pale expression. Any life had left their body but Shoto had to continue. He spoke with my father and he agreed to let Shepard become my legal guardian. 
I'll be moving in with Shepard Sensei but you two are still my family. I'd still very much like to be a part of your life. If you'll like continue doing so that is. Fayumi and Natsuo were at a loss of words and hearing. The man dining next to them would be Shoto's new legal guardian and they all knew about their family drama. Did Shoto not care at all for them? When they looked to see that the boy's facial expression hadn't changed they both realized everyone knew but them. They lost their elder brother and now they were about to lose their youngest to a stranger. Natsuo stood up and was about ready to leave but one plead from Shoto changed his mind as he sat back down. Fayumi herself had remained silent. Did she not do good enough that Shoto would trust someone else over her? Why didn't he at least confide in her about this big decision? So is this why you were so willing to have dinner? To make this news easier for us? Fayumi has asked with a sorrowful look and her head a bit down. Yes, you two deserve to know the truth as soon as possible. I'm not replacing you both okay. You're both my siblings I just. Shoto has pain in his eyes. He didn't mean to hurt them yet here he was doing that. I just need this. It'll make me a better person. What Shoto said is the truth. All eyes were now on Endeavor, a surprise to see him come to his defense. Recently it has come to my attention that Shoto has been going through an improvement, largely in due to Shifter's part. Where was this throw of accolades a few minutes ago? They two pros were about to rip each other's heads apart. If he's the reason why Shoto finally accepted his left side then that's all the reason I need to sign those papers over to him. The Todorokis just sat there in silence. They did ask Shoto if they could discuss things more, which Shoto made no objections to doing so. They even asked if Bakugo and Midoriya could join them wanted to get their input on Shoto living with them. They each agreed to her request without complaint. Once that information has been revealed and the adults left the room, the boys decided to help out with dishes. Least they could do given how they were fed a good meal. Fayumi helped them out for a time but the boys felt indebted to her. Once it was clear the boys hand it handled Fayumi joined Natsuo in the dining room with Shoto. They had a bunch to discuss regarding Shoto's new living arrangements. In the meantime Shifter sat across from Endeavor's office room. They had just finished signing over legal guardianship over. The one condition was that Endeavor expected a weekly report on Shoto's condition. That was something Shifter had no problem with doing. Frankly he would have done so even if he didn't demand it. Sitting in uncomfortable silence once they realized they had nothing more Anton took the papers and put them in his jacket. Endeavor looked like he had something else to say but that was stopped by the buzzing of his phone. Alert, alert, alert. Both heroes' phone went off as they got an alarm to two buildings that had been attacked by a group of villains. They gave each other and another look before sighing. While Endeavor wasn't too keen on the assistance Shifter reminded him that he was a hero too, just as him. Endeavor would take the building that's farther away while Shifter agreed to take the closer one. The boys in the meantime would stay at the Todoroki's, Shepard giving instructions to listen to Fayumi and Natsuo while he was gone. The two pros departed as they got into their gear. Before he left Anton's sons extended a fist out for a fist bump, which Shepard bumped back, telling them he'll kick ass to them tonight, since it was technically his first day back on the job since the USJ. The kids all watched their respective parent leave they then turned to each other and Fayumi directed everyone back to the dining room. Sitting down the older Todorokis began to ask why Shoto had requested his teacher to be his legal guardian. Why not a Fayumi be in his custody given how she's almost of age? Shoto sat there and began to answer. For one it was thanks to Shepard that he feels G can be more than a quirk marriage offspring, earning a flinch from both his siblings. Second he respected the man. He told them how he helps each individual student and see the best in themselves. But the biggest reason was because of them. He wanted to desperately be closer to both of them. But he didn't know how to even interact at times and they sadly knew it. When was the last time they'd ever hung out? When had they ever gone shopping or to the park? They barely had time to talk to each other nowadays with Natsuo being in collegians and Fayumi being a teacher. With Shoto training to be a hero he wasn't sure if he'd have time to even message them. Then came the explanation of how Shifter raised two brothers, complete opposites, but they always had each other's back. Shoto knew Shepard could help him have that relationship with his siblings. Fayumi had tears in her eyes, happy that Shoto wanted her to be a part of his life, glad that she didn't mess up as an older sister. She really only wanted the best for her younger brother, especially after what happened with Toya. She still remembered the funeral that day. Shoto was too young to remember but her and Natsuo were never really the same after that. He was their older brother, the guy they looked up to the most. Especially Natsuo those two were practically inseparable. For the longest time she didn't know how to really interact with Shoto, with Endeavor always secluding him from everything. She was lucky his pro-hero work caused him to work later hours which meant Shoto could spend a bit more time with them. But even then there was so much she didn't know about him. Not a good older sister really. Barely being able to know what your youngest sibling is like. It's why she chose to pursue the role of being a teacher. To be there for younger children in a way she couldn't be for her younger brother. Shoto had washed away all that guilt she had and it meant the world to her. 
to know that Shoto thought so highly of her, to realize he saw her as a sister and not a stranger. She absolutely gave her brother her blessing, telling him that no matter what they'll see each other and that they'll always be family. Natsuo himself had developed a huge lump in his throat. He felt hurt that Shoto didn't at least talk to him first, but honestly they never really had the time to talk. Maybe casual conversations before they had to leave to their respective schools, but never as much as tonight. Despite this distant brotherhood Natsu loved his younger brother to absolute death. He remembered how he idolized Toya. His older brother took care of him and Fayumi, always putting their needs above his own, especially when it came to what they wanted to be in life. The day he died Natsuo was so crushed he barely left his room. Then one day he remembered a young Shoto crawling to his room. How such a little kid held his fingers and giggled at the sight of the young spiky white-haired boy. It brought his spirits up so much that he made a promise to himself to watch after Shoto the same way Toya did for him. For the first few years that's how their relationship was. All three of them were happy. But that all changed when Shoto developed his quirk, or rather quirks. And since then Natsuo barely could interact with his younger brother. All because of Endeavor's dream of surpassing All Might. That dream resulted in Natsuo practically losing his younger brother. Not being able to protect him the way Toya protected him. And yet sitting in front of him, his little brother still wanted that. He still wanted to be brothers, not strangers. It's all Natsuo ever wanted to be for Shoto. An older brother and he was more than happy to support his younger brother in this. Shoto stood up and approached the two of them he held them in a tight hug which only made the Todorokis cry. This entire evening may have been worth it. His siblings were okay with all this and they apparently approved of his sensei being more than his teacher. It was more than Shoto has asked for. Guess his sensei was right. He really needed this more than anything really. And he was grateful that he wasn't going to be alone anymore. Izuku smiled at seeing Shoto have a good evening. Yeah it was stressful but he was happy to know that he could at least move on with his sibling blessing. He was about to say something when he suddenly felt a jolt of lighting hit the back of his brain. He looked to see if he'd accidentally used OFA but he didn't. The pain in back to his head grew as his eyes went into a frenzy. Katsuki definitely noticed his brother acting different but what he didn't expect was for him to jump and tackle Isaha and his sibling to the ground. The next thing that happened was a doors to the dining room has been stabbed by a large piece of sharpened white line. Katsuki thankfully wasn't near those animated lines. He looked to see Izuku had already gotten half and half up while guarding the other two Todoroki. They heard a deranged voice speak up. I was hoping Endeavor would at least be here. Well if I take out his brats he's sure to notice me now. The man has a horizontal black and white striped pants and shirt he also wore a vest. He had saliva drooling from his mouth and on his neck he looked like he injected a sharp needle into it. A quirk enhancement drug more than likely. He's a villain who calls himself Ending. Izuku shouted I think Endeavor put him away seven years ago. The pain in the back of his head wouldn't stop for some reason. Did this guy have another quirk? Was he sent by the League of Villains? Shit why does his head hurt so much? Oh someone knows about me. Ending shouted with glee then you die last. Ending sent a wave of white sharp lines at the group but Todoroki used his eyes to freeze most of them. Unfortunately more came at him due to the drug running through Ending body. T-O-D-O-R-O-K-I. Step four paces back and then turn to your left. He heard Midoriya shout and he instinctively did as instructed. All of Ending's attack missed their mark. As soon as they did Bakugo and Midoriya got Fayumi and Natsuo out of there. Ending's attack having caused a hole in the wall. The group began to run. Normally Katsuki and Izuku would use their quirks but their injuries were still noticeable. It pissed Katsuki off as he wanted to fight not run away like a coward. But there was more to being a hero than fighting. It was rescuing people too. Gritting his teeth he kept an eye on everyone, making sure none of them were behind. K-A-C-C-H-A-N stop. And Bakugo did so as he did a few more white tendrils pierce the walls. Deku knew exactly where this guy's attack would be. It has saved his life and Icy Hots and his siblings too. Deku how? Three inches to your right then jump up. Izuku shouted not having time to explain why he's able to predict Ending's movements. And Katsuki didn't need another second to comply as he dodged all of Ending's attacks. That moment was all Shoto needed to grab one like and start to freeze it. Katsuki stared back to see Deku holding the back of his head like he was having a headache. Was OFA acting up? No he hasn't used his quirk, so what could it be? No, 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 no. This can't be right. Why are you not getting hurt? Why haven't I killed any of you? I'm Ending. I need to show your bodies of to Endeavor so he can kill me. Going deranged as saliva spewed from his mouth he pulled another needle and injected his body with it. All of a sudden his body went into a spasm then a large amount of lines from the neighborhood reached out to him. Izuku's brain went full on haywire mode he immediately told Todoroki to make an ice shield in front of them. Not wasting any time Shoto made one just as ending send a wave of lines, shaped in spears at them. Thankfully Shoto had a better reaction time as his quirk protected them. Kakin called Dad. Our phones were in the dining room remember? Fuck. Shifter had just knocked out the last villain. 
He sent his location to the police and untied every hostage in the room after checking to see if any were injured. Once he heard sirens he knew that was his quite a leave. Normally he'd stay behind and give his report to the police but since this was Endeavor's territory he'd much rather not give the media any chance to be associated with him. He'd watched from the rooftops as he saw the police take all the villains. Several ambulances had also arrived. Breathing a sigh of relief having done his part he took a step to hear his phone ring. He didn't expect to hear Endeavor calling him. Endeavor, Shifter answered his mask still on. Shifter how far are you from my home? Endeavor shouted on the other end. He could hear several loud noises, probably quirks being used and yelling from the villain's part. About three miles but Endeavor abruptly cut him off these two attacks were a setup. They were meant to lure me out so they could attack my home. Shifter didn't need any other reason to book it he began to shift his way back. His family had now become a target along with the Todorokis. He cursed his two-second cooldown in times like these. Any other time when he used his quirk it always felt like there was no cooldown but when his sons were in danger it all went downhill. He could only hope he'd make it on time. On the other end, Endeavor and his psychics were almost done with their side of the work. Turns out when they were capturing the villains one of them has slipped up and mentioned Endeavor's house. This sent Enji in a rage as he interrogated the man. All this destruction and kidnapping was just to lure the number two hero about his home so they could destroy it. But what these villains didn't know is that Endeavor's family was there, and not just as but Shifter's too. Once that call ended he looked at his phone and realized he couldn't leave things to Shifter alone. Flashback. So that was my new little brother dad. Endeavor began to whip the sweat off of a young Toya Todoroki having finished their training. Yes from what the doctors told me he has both my quirk and your mother's. Once Inji finished he sat down as Toya sat himself on his lap. Two quirks. Man he's so lucky. Toya pouted crossing his arms but my quirk is way cooler. I mean look dad. He snapped his fingers and let out a small blue fire. I've been working really hard. Even your fire doesn't get that hot unless you push yourself. I can see that. And I'm glad you're continuing to push yourself. But remember what the doctors told you son. Endeavor looked at a small burn mark on Toya's arm. It wasn't severe but it was the first time he'd noticed such a lasting mark on his body. Toya. Once Shoto becomes of age I'll have to cut down on your training. Is this because of the scars that I have? A young Toya asked extending one of his arms out. I've heard you and mom argue you know. Endeavor wasn't aware his eldest had been eavesdropping on their nightly conversations. Your mother and I have different viewpoints on how we should approach your injuries. But I don't want you to. No it's fine. I'll still be a hero but a different hero. One Shoto can look up to for help. I can help train him too because that's what older brothers do. Toya had a large goofy smile aimed at his father. And she laughed as he laid down only to be dog-pilled by Toya. I'll be more careful with my quirk but it won't stop me from working hard. I still want to be your psychic so please don't tell me I can't be a hero. Toya sniffled at the idea of his dream not being possible anymore. Endeavor moved a finger to whip away a sniffling Toya's tears alright we'll have to adjust your training though. I hope you understand that son. If you can agree to that then I'll continue training you and let you be a hero. Deal. Enji offered his hand out. Deal. Toya tried his best to shake his father larger hands, eventually succeeding. Besides if Shoto wants to surpass you he's gonna have to surpass his big brother first. Enji ruffled Toya's hair you know son I think you'll be an excellent teacher when Shoto comes of age. Trusting Burning to handle the rest as they only had a few more villains more deal with Endeavor began to fly at maximum speed back to his house. Toya. As he flew he realized that if he was alive Toya would more than likely be a pro by now. More than that he'd probably be helping him as his sidekick. But deep down he'd be at the house with Fayumi, Natsuo and Shoto. He would protecting them all at this moment. Instead he's dead because he overpushed his training one day. Is this what it meant to be a Todoroki then? To always have your children in danger. Perhaps, Shifter was right. Maybe it is time to try and be a father and not a hero. Is pushed past his limits and began to fly faster. They continued to run. And each time Izuku directed them how to avoid Ending's maneuvers. Dodging every blow successfully by the looks of it they were about to hold off until help could get there. But then Izuku fell down holding his head. Natsuo didn't waste a second to pull him up. But a large attack was about to come at them. Shoto then formed an ice barrier around them. Unfortunately this meant they wouldn't be able to move. They were pinned down. Todoroki's ice had began to serve as a shield. But ending continued the assault. Izuka's headache had only gotten worse. His head was now throbbing. Fayumi did use her quirk to at least numb the pain in his head. Bakugo however was gritting his teeth. He wanted to take these damn cast off and fight back at this asshole. But he couldn't. He made a promise to the PLD fart. Just like he made a promise to them to be more careful, he would honor that promise. Pissed him but his dad would always be an exception to his pride. Besides he had to stay and keep his brother safe. Whatever the fuck was happening to his head it definitely had to do with this attacker. A crack in Shoto's eyes had started to form. He immediately reinforced it. But it made little difference as the another cracked form. 
Within moments Shoto's ice began to break down. Everyone duck. And no one questioned Izuka's demand because Ending's attack missed the mark. Ending pulled back his attack and went for another but all of a sudden a blast of fire was shot at him. With Izuka's instructions Shoto used his fire to hit Ending where it hurt. Fayumi Ann's Natsuo has been surprised to see Shoto use his quirk. Seems Midoriya and Shepard were the best thing for him right now. All of a sudden Izuka's headache stopped. He didn't know what had just happened but it was as if the danger was over. You brats think you can just ending felt two large fist ram at his back as his body had now been glued to floor. Shifter and Endeavor had arrived at the same time to land a hard double punch. He was knocked out immediately as Endeavor placed a pair of cuffs in his arms. They both then saw the damage of the house and their respective kids. By the looks of it no one had been hurt. Bakugo went to his brother's side. He stumbled a bit on standing up but he was okay. When asked how Izuku knew how to dodge all those attacks Midoriya couldn't give an answer. He wasn't sure if it was by instinct or my paranoia. Regardless they didn't want to question him further. Those instincts made it possible for them to not be hurt. The boys agreed not to tell their old man about Izuka's headache, at least not until tomorrow. They didn't want to make him worry more than he already was. Once they got out to the ice, his sons immediately jumped at their old man. He caught them in a hug asking them if they were both okay. He ruffled their hairs and was glad to know they took charge in keeping the Todorokis safe. Enji's family slowly approached him. Fayumi hugged her father. Taking him aback, he didn't expect that. Natsuo had a less hateful look while Shoto. He was undecided on who to approach either himself or Shepard. Looking at Ending's body he knew this was partly his fault. Any attacks on him he can endure. But to go after his family was something that Enji came to understand would destroy him, just as Toya's death nearly destroyed him. The boys helped Shoto pack a few of his things in the back trunk of the car. Fayumi and Natsuo were also moving what they could salvage from the attack. Thankfully most of the damage was towards the living and dining room. Once everyone's belongings were gathered the kids could see the adults talking to the police. More than likely they were giving their statements as Ending was dragged away in a reinforced vehicle. After the cops left they each turned and Shifter started to walk to his sons but Endeavor didn't. He stood there at least until he called out Anton's hero name. Shifter, Enji directed his voice at Shepard, but he said in such a way for everyone to hear it. He then bowed his head thank you for assisting my children today. I owe you a debt it seems. Shifter sighed heavily taking a breath and removing his nanotech mask. Addressing the pro hero in front of their families raise your head and G Todoroki. And Endeavor did so. Both pros looked each other in the eyes. If you want to repay me, be better for them. He gestured at the three Todorokis. You and I will never truly be friends, partners or colleagues. The one and only thing we have in common is that we are pro heroes. But maybe it's not too late for you and your kids. They're still at that age where forgiveness or atonement might be possible. I should know I threw aside my family years ago. He closed his eye composing himself letting me be Shoto's guardian may have been the first step but only you can decide how to walk forward with this. And only they can decide if they want to walk by your side. Those words had hit Endeavor like a truck. Just yesterday he was on the rooftops arguing with Shepard. And tonight despite the hostel between the two Shepard didn't hesitate to help him with his kids. And here he was again giving him a reality check. Endeavor had approached his kids. Shepard's sons wanted to give them space join their old man. He had been reminded of losing his kids again. The same way he lost Toya due to his own actions. He knows he has no right to ask to be a part of their lives. He knows he's fucked up. Not just with Shoto but all of them. Especially with Rei and Toya. Two names that caused his kids to wince as he's never mentioned them since they left their lives. Even so, he can only hope his kids will give him the opportunity to be better for their sake and his. Fayumi had been accepting of giving her father a chance. But she made it clear to stop seeing Shoto as quirk marriage tool. He's their youngest and shouldn't be forced to have such a heavy burden at a young age. Natsuo, however, didn't feel he deserved forgiveness or atonement. Saving their lives one time did not make up for all the abuse his family endured, nor did it make him forget the loss of his older brother and missing out on Shoto's childhood. Shoto, however, was conflicted. As a father he is terrible but as a hero he excels. Even so Shoto still couldn't find any form of forgiveness for him. But he was willing to at least consider the option of Endeavor being a part of his life. That was more than Endeavor deserved but he wouldn't argue with any of their decisions. But after tonight it was clear that his kids needed better protection. He intends to build a new house for his kids. One better protected but still close enough to not interfere with their lives. But Endeavor made one thing clear with Shoto. He was free to choose who he wants to spend his time. Be it with his family or Shepard's family. Enji wouldn't interfere with his choice. Shoto decided he'd stay with Shepard but would make regular visits to his family. They both reminded him that they approved of his decision and that they were just happy to stay in touch. After a heartfelt goodbye with the siblings Shoto sat on the back of the car while Midoriya sat next to him. Before he left Shepard got out of car, instructing his kids not to follow. As Inji took one last look at his destroyed home he didn't expect to see Anton approach him. 
They'd assumed their conversations had all but been finished today. But turns out Shifter had one final thing to ask him. Whereas Rei Todoroki, Endeavor would normally leave it like that. Not even bothering to respond at what he'd asked. But after tonight he had no right to even deny Shifter's request. He pulled out a piece of paper and wrote an address down. He handed it to Shifter as he looked to memorize what had been written. Putting the paper in his pocket, he gave him a nod signifying that they were even. One thing I must warn you, she's not who she used to be. And she commented as Shifter looked back at him. What do you mean? If you plan on taking Shoto to her, he should be prepared to realize that Rei isn't the woman I married all those years ago. Endeavor wouldn't elaborate any further, which irritated Anton but he knew he wasn't going to get anywhere. Once they'd arrived home they all decided to meet in the living room and crash their bodies on the many couches that were there. This wasn't how he expected the night to go but Shepard took some small comfort at the fact that his siblings were okay with Shoto staying at his home for the majority of the time. That didn't mean Shepard was going to keep Shoto away from Natsuo or Fayumi. He sadly knew what he had to do however. Dad, Bakugo asked with a concerned tone. Shifter sighed before composing himself. Tomorrow, Aizawa will be taking you and Izuku to UA for a checkup with Recovery Girl. You'll spend a good amount of time there so just be on your best behavior please. Bakugo and Midoriya gave each other a glance before nodding. They had considered telling them about Izuku being able to predict the villain's moves perfectly, but they'd rather not stress the old man any more than he already was. And honestly they didn't mind going with Eraser since both knew he would have their best interest at heart, and the session with Recovery Girl would go well. They didn't use their quirks during that attack so they should be at 100% for tomorrow. Yeah me and the nerd don't mind, but what about Isahat? I plan to take Todoroki to visit his mom tomorrow. Shifter didn't need to look at Shoto to know he'd just flipped the kid's world upside down. Ew, you found her. Todoroki asked his voice about to break. Endeavor told me where she is. And for once I think he's telling the truth. He turned to face Shoto kid. I know this is sudden but you need to see your mom. Especially after tonight. It took all of Todoroki's energy to not break down again. Shifter was doing too much for him and now he's done the one thing he'd wanted for a long time. He stood there silently before he finally spoke up. I'm like that, Shepard Sensei. Izuku didn't know where he was. He was standing on a rock and the world around him looked as if it was traveling at the speed of light. His eyes were open but his body was enveloped in some form of dark mist. He could only see the tip of his fingers and half of his face. He tried to move but immediately fell down on his face. Where the hell was he? You're him aren't you? The ninth user of OFA. A white-haired man with a white shirt and black pants stood in front of him. He had green eyes and a frail-looking body. He offered Izuku a hand. Izuku hesitated at first but something inside him told him to trust his gut. He reached out and accepted Stranger's hand. That was enough for him to get back on his feet. Only for a few seconds as he was about to fall down but the white-haired man caught him. How about we sit instead? Izuku nodded best he could as they say across from each other. You have questions for starters where are we and who am I? Izuku only nodded at the man, which resulted in a chuckle on my apologies you can't speak. Well to be fair this is your first time unlocking the vestige realm. That's where we are actually, a place where OFA power grows and connects. And as for me, my name is Yoichi. I'm the first user of OFA. The first user of OFA. He was here talking to him. He wasn't in the afterlife was he? Wait if that's true then maybe he died during Ending's attack. Oh god his dad must be in shambles. Wait hold on if he's dead what about OFA? Ah fuck All Might. There's no way if All Might could transfer his quirk. And Kakan he must be. I can see you're beginning your overthinking things. The rock they were sitting on began to shake. Try not to think too hard. Emotions here are far stronger than usually are. They can affect the vestige realm. Upon hearing this Izuku calmed down. Look you're not dead you're still very much alive. It's just that OFA has reached its singularity. It can finally reach its full potential after so many long years. Yoichi had such a sincere smile. Just how long was this man waiting for OFA to grow this powerful? Because of that you're going to be different from all the past users, that include a, or All Might as you call him. You'll actually begin to have access to the previous users of OFA original quirks. And it, seems you've already unlocked a new power. I'd love to be the one to explain but I think I'll let forth do the honors. A green light made its way to Izuku and Yoichi. The light then took the form of man with two scars that stretched from forehead to his chin. Sup 9th, the name's Hikid Shinomori the fourth user of OFA. And as our fearless leader was explaining yes you do have my quirk. It's called Danger Sense. A new quirk. Izuku has two quirks now. It's extremely rare to even have one but two. And the name Danger Sense. If he had a notebook he'd already start writing down meticulously on how he could learn to use it. Shinomori could feel the kid's enthusiasm when it came to finding out about his quirk. He was happy to oblige the basic summary as this. You can actually detect any potentially threats that might come at you. It's sort of like a sharp pain in the back of your head or a jolt of lightning. Gesturing at the back of his head the greater the threat the more intense my quirk becomes, especially for first-time usage. 
So that's what that sharp pain was. Danger sense going ballistic. Well his head may have been in pain but he was lucky he was able to unlock that quirk tonight. It definitely saved everyone from getting hurt or worse. At the moment it would appear you'll only have access to danger sense. 15% of OFA is still an impressive feat to do. I should know I spent a long time strengthening that quirk. He couldn't help but give the kid's forehead a flick. But as you unlock more of OFA power the previous quirks should become more available to you. That and you'll be able to maintain your connection in the vestige realm much longer. We have a lot to teach you actually. All of a sudden the vestige world began to slow down well seems like we're out of time. Yoichi said and I was hoping to talk with him a bit more. He and Shinomori put an arm on Izuka's shoulder. We look forward to chatting with you again Izuku. Good luck out there. And remember to take it easy every now and then. You're still a kid and you should enjoy youth while you can. Izuku woke up he checked his All Might clock. 3 AM that wasn't a dream it felt far too real to have been. He met the original and fourth user of OFA and had apparently unlocked a new quirk. A part of him wanted to ask his dad for an input he's 90% sure he's awake right now. But he also needed to let All Might know. For now he closed his eyes and began to drift away. Aizawa had a large amount of paperwork with him on his desk. It was to be expected given how the internships are right around the corner. This year's would be different however, joint internships. That's what yesterday's email said as several pro heroes released statements that they plan to work together for this year's students of class 1A. Despite him being at home he could practically hear a collective groan between himself and all the UA staff members. Truth be told he never mind doing paperwork, but having to redo the applications and also sign off on every form proved to be tedious. And every staff member knew who to thank for this additional work on a weekend, Shifter. One of his two closest friends must be getting a kick out of this, knowing that his idea worked and having the unforeseen turn of events of added papers. Aizawa needed coffee and he needed it a SAP. Thankfully he knew where to get the best brand, at Shepard's house. He did give him a master key and he did say his house was always open. Honestly he'd left several of his sleeping bags and his spare laptop at his friend's house so it may as well be a second home. And Shifter did ask him to meet him on a Saturday morning, something that'll affect their sanity and their job. Yahizawa made sure to grab his large mug for this morning meeting. Parking his car in Shepard's garage he made his way to the elevator. It still surprised him how well accommodated his friend's home was. While the man did practically throw money around like they were scraps of paper, and he paid half the maintenance bills at UA, along with signing his paycheck. Yeah he's gonna ask for a raise after today. He will pull the friendship card if need be. The elevator door dinged as Aizawa made his way to the living room. There he could see Shepard making breakfast. Strange that his sons hadn't woken up however but he wasn't about to look a gift horse in the mouth. It was too early to deal with the problem duo. Morning Shepard, Aizawa said as he put several folders on the living room table. After last night Shepard was in a particularly dreaded mood, having to deal with the stubbornness that was in Jitotoroki and his sons being attacked in the pro hero's home. Well it left him in a sour mood to say the least. Thankfully no one was hurt and they made it back home safely but today he's got a difficult task ahead of him, taking Shoto to see his mom. He was more so worried for Shoto than anything else. Ten years of not seeing your parent leaves an effect on someone. It was made worse by the fact the last thing she did to him was give him that scar. He reached for his back and was reminded of his own parent for a moment. A mother scaring their own kid, a fucked up thing to do. He narrowed his eyes as he continued to make breakfast today. He made do with the peace and quiet today, a complete opposite compared to yesterday's shit show. That's when he heard the elevator door open and his mood brightened a tad bit. He knew Aizawa was coming today and he honestly was grateful he did because he needed a favor from him. Morning Aizawa, fresh pot of coffee is all yours for the taking. He pointed to the coffee machine. Shifter knew Aizawa loved his coffee. It was one of the few times Anton wouldn't hesitate to drain his bank account for. Coffee was the elixir of life for underground heroes. Aizawa nodded as he began to pour the pot into his mug. One look at Shifter and he could see his friend was drained more so than usual. He took a drink and felt the life in him grow. He saw Shifter put serve breakfast as he began to fill each bowl with rice and a side of eggs, placing cups alongside them as he pulled out the apple and orange juice containers. You're in a bit of a motherhood mode. All you need is a pink apron with a flower design, Aizawa said smugly as he took another chug from his thermos. He was met with Shifter giving him an irritated look. He heard him sigh as he sat down. Hey come on now, I was only teasing. A racer sat next to him closing his thermostat. Something happened yesterday didn't it? Yeah don't worry I just, I had an extremely long night. Gods know I was about to lose my sanity. He rubbed his eyes a bit before addressing a racer's question. And more or less, look I need a favor from you today. Aizawa was all ears now what is it? Today I was scheduled to taking my boys to recovery girl. Just a simple checkup and an easy session of healing. But something came up and I won't be able to take them. I was hoping that you would watch over them for today. 
Shifter. Yeah hi no problem duo. Chaotic gremlins. They're little shitheads. Look today I made a promise to someone and I just need you to look out for them in UA. Shepard turned to look at his friend's expression. He couldn't tell if he was irritated or serious. But he could already feel the upcoming headache that he was about to have today if he said yes. What he saw next caused Shepard to rethink all his life choices. He saw Aizawa smile. A sweet sincere smile. He began to momentarily panic as to what universe he woke up to. Since when does Aizawa smile like that? So what you're saying is if I do this, you'll owe me? Fuck, there it is. Shepard groaned. What do you want? I'm gonna need a raise. Done. He pulled out a pen checkbook from thin air and filed it up. He made sure to add a lot of zeros. And a paid vacation. When have you ever taken a vacation? Aizawa's smile did not drop. Dot 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 fine. Anything else? And you're doing my paperwork for the weekend. Oh low blow right there. Shepard didn't mind doing his own paperwork but he knew Aizawa had an extra stack thanks to him. Deal. Aizawa's smile dropped as he drank from his coffee and just so you're aware that wasn't a logical deception. Oh it was a good morning for Aizawa after today he's gonna have a free day of relaxation and sleep. A few minutes later Aizawa could hear the elevator door open. Well the Hellions were awake and he at least managed to get in a chug of his coffee. So he prepared himself for babysitting Midoriya and Bakugo. But he needed a second to adjust his eyesight. Todoroki was here too. Did he spend the night in? Wait a minute when did he find out about Shepard and his sons? He saw the trio sit down and began to eat. He turned to look at Shifter. Breakfast first, questions and answers later. Breakfast was largely eaten in silence whatever happened last night no one wanted to talk about. How was it that Aizawa had the most energy right now? After everyone finished their meals and cleaned their plates them I sat in the living room. From there Shepard explained everything. From Shoto finding out the truth about his kids, being made his legal guardian and learning that he was going to be there for Shoto as he met his mom for the first time. Shepard also informed him about last night's dinner session, which had Eraser confused. He hated Endeavor so for him to make a compromise on his ward's part must mean he's taking this extremely seriously. So to summarize, you'll be living under Shifter's roof from now on. Your father is an asshole. You haven't seen your mom in years and you want to keep your new relationship with Shepard a secret. Yes, Todoroki said as he looked down. He was extremely nervous as he barely got any sleep last night. I don't mind the staff knowing but I'd appreciate it if they didn't tell any of my classmates. HMMMM. Aizawa took one look at the boy before addressing him. Well, you're in good hands Todoroki. If there's anyone who knows how to be a good parent it's Shifter. And you don't have to worry about the secrecy. All of the UA wouldn't blurt out sensitive information like that, though I am curious. He turned to look at Shifter are you going to retire this time Shifter? The other underground hero let out a chuckle waving his hand off at Aizawa. No not this time. Besides Nenzu would have my head on a platter if I just left. Thankfully he was more experienced on raising a kid this time around. Aizawa nodded at Shifter I may not be your guardian but I am still your teacher Todoroki. If you need anything let me know. I'm more than happy to lend you a hand. That was twice Shifter was trusting him with a kid. And that list is very small indeed. But he was there for Midoriya and Bakugo when Shifter was out of commission he can be there for Todoroki if he needs the extra help. A thought however struck Aizawa. I just realized you're raising the top three students of class 1 a Shifter. Oh gee really wow I must have overlooked that small detail. He was hitting Aizawa with the sarcasm as a bit of payback for the bride from earlier. Besides what are friends for after all? Well what I mean to say is I hope you have good insurance on the housing. I'm sure nothing can go wrong with adding an additional problem child to your flock. The racer could practically see Shepard's hair begin to fall out. I hate you, you know that. I hope present Mike sends you a loud voicemail you ass hat. Oh I can at least press the mute button. You on other hand have to worry that Todoroki won't pick up any of Midoriya or Bakugo's antics. I'm sure it won't cause you to lose your sanity at all. Aizawa sensei. Todoroki has nothing to worry about. Me and Kaken would never do anything to add additional stress to the old man's life. Izuku commented with a smirk. Katsuki glanced at his brother soon an identical smirk would slowly spread over his face. Yeah hobo sensei. Me and the nerd would never cause the old fart any form of mental pain. Shepard dragged his hand over his face and groaned the boys definitely heard him mutter you little shitheads which lead to a bombardment of teasing. In a way it was nice however. Just a few moments ago no one had the mental capacity to speak but now they couldn't stop annoying Shepard with childish antics. But if that's the price to pay for making sure his boys were happy after an attack on them then that's what he'll do. After a few shared laughs it was time to part ways for now. Aizawa agreed to look after the problem duo for today but was very adamant to be on good behavior. Or else they would pay the coming Monday when they returned to school. And as much as Katsuki and Izuku wanted to raise hell they figured they could be on civil for a change. Besides tomorrow they'd just go chaotic in the training room to cause future Shepard problem. On the opposite end, Shoto would go with Shepard to see his mom. He had been more quiet than usual this morning. And honestly Shepard couldn't blame him one bit. 
but he made the kid a promise. He keeps his promises. Recovery girl had just finished having her morning tea. It had been quiet in the halls of UA. The days after the sports festival were often met with solitude for her. Menzu was far too busy with paperwork and organizing the media to chat with her, and most of the staff members had their own share of paperwork to deal with. But that would change in a few days. She would soon have two assistants to help her out with all future hero work. Mitashiba and Ryo Kenta would soon join the staff thanks in part to being hired by Shifter, and truthfully she was grateful for the future help. Age was beginning to catch up to her. She looked at a picture of her younger self. Next to her was a tall grey-haired man. Asor Hiko there are days where I miss your company. I even miss the times you'd be here to scold All Might every time he failed your training. She had a small but very sorrowful smile well at least I know you're still out there, probably eating on some tayak. Meanwhile I'm still here, dealing with all these crazy children. The door to her clinic opened Ah Shep she stopped when she saw it was Aizawa and not Shepard bringing in her two top patients. Eraser head, forgive me but I was under the impression that Shifter was bringing the boys not you. She hopped of her chair and grabbed her cane. Midoriya and Bakugo were already plopped themselves to the infirmary beds, knowing Eraser would do all the explaining. Anton had to deal with an emergency. He asked me to watch over the problem duo for today. Aizawa had begun to submerge himself in his sleeping cocoon as he explained the situation. He was aware the two do them would be tired after one session with the old lady so it would be an easy sleep day for him, at least for a while. Well it must be important if he's trusting you with his sons. Alright children, let's see if you two actually followed instructions for once. She slammed her cane on the ground and the boys began to remove their casts. One look and she could tell they were both at around 80%. So with one kiss she managed to heal the two boys. They then let themselves be taken by the fatigue of recovery girl's quirk. Well looks like my work here is done. You're free to rest for the day and you can use your quirk starting once you wake up, understood. The two of them thanked her, their eyesight already beginning to fade away. Yesterday's attack really was a lot to deal with so the extra sleep was much appreciated. Seeing as though the boys were drained, he allowed himself to also fall asleep. Recovery was met with the sight of three men sleeping in her clinic. Well at least it'll be quiet for now. She started to pull out some paperwork regarding clockwork and Dr. Shiba. She couldn't help but wait to have these two under her wing. Shoto couldn't stop the shaking in his legs. The drive to the hospital was driven in complete silence. He had checked his phone and texted Fayumi and Natsuo if they were both okay after yesterday's attack. They both had reassured him that they were fine, a little shaken but nothing that would cause them any worry. That really didn't ease his worries. Here he was about to meet someone that none of his siblings had met in so long, and he hasn't even told them. How could he bring himself to start this conversation? Oh hey I know you two just went through a rough night with being attacked by a villain but I found out where mom is. Wanna come join me on this emotional trauma day? Maybe not the best thing to say given recent events. Kid, kid, kid. Todoroki shot his head up at hearing his teacher's voice. He hadn't noticed that they were already at the hospital. It was a large clinic, surrounded by a large terrain. He saw several patients outside sitting on benches watch accompanied by a nurse. Security outside was very well organized as well. No doubt this was a private clinic. Made sense his father could afford to send his mom to a place like this. They slide and doors opened as they two of them made their way to the counter. The receptionist had popped a piece of gum. Yes, what can I do for you today? She asked in a bit of an annoyed manner. She looked at Todoroki and Shepard. Todoroki was about to speak but he couldn't find the words. But Shepard was there for the kid hello there. My name is Anton Shepard and this is Shoto Todoroki. We're here to see Ray Todoroki, the boy's mother. As Anton gestured towards the kid. Shoto could only give Shepard a small nod. Gods why was this so hard? All his life he'd wanted to see her again. And now the moment they were in the same building he starts to tense up. Fuck what happened to the guy who didn't hesitate to save his siblings or to the guy who fought hard in the sports festival. The receptionist sat there, giving them a non-caring look but she did her job and checked in the system. A few minutes of searching and she found the name Ray. Okay so there is a patient under that name, but only family members can see her. She gave Shepard a glare and Todoroki an eye roll as she waved her hand pointing in the direction of where to go. Shoto's head shot up. What about Shepard? It was the first time he's hadn't referred to Shepard as sensei. His anxiety may have caused him to skip the formalities but his mentor had to be there with him. The receptionist informed him again that he can't be there since he isn't family. Todoroki clenched his fist. He still insisted that Shepard there. He gave her an angry look but she sat still and didn't budge. Unfortunately this woman hasn't met the man that is Anton Shepard. Ma'am I'm this boy's legal guardian. By rights I am allowed to accompany him. He pulled out the papers Endeavor had signed yesterday and handed them to her. Once she took a look at them and gave them an irritated expression, Shepard gave an eye-rolled look. She handed them back and informed them both of where Ray rooms is. As they made their way through the clinic Shoto could feel his footsteps getting heavier and heavier. The hallway itself felt a bit more narrow and he began to tune out every doctor and nurse he saw. 
Todoroki stopped when he saw the door to her room. There it was Rei Todoroki labeled on the side of the door. He reached for the door handle but stopped midway. He took a few steps back and sat in a nearby bench. His breathing grew heavy, his vision began to grow blurry, his hands started to shake and he began to sweat a bit. Was he about to have a panic attack? Fuck not now, not now. Any other day but today he has to see her, he. His thought were calmed down when he heard his guardian's voice. Whenever you're ready kid, there's no need for you to rush in there. Shepard had crouched down in front of him so he could be at eye level. But first I need you to match my breathing. Shoto nodded and Shifter took a deep breath as he began to tap out a breathing pattern. Once Shoto could breathe again he saw his hands were no longer shaking. Shepard pulled out a handkerchief to whip away the sweat that was building up on him. He gave Todoroki's chest a small punch I get you're nervous, and I know you haven't been yourself all day kid, but you don't have to go through this alone. I'm here to help you remember, so if you need me to be in there I'll be there for you. If you need me to wait out here I'll wait. He could tell Shoto has calmed down and was no longer stressed. He sat next to him in silence, having an arm on his shoulder, until Todoroki stood up and approached the door. This time when he reached the door handle he looked back at Shepard thank you, sensei. I need to do this alone. Could you wait out here though? Shifter gave warm smile and a nod. He opened the door to see his mom. Sitting down, looking at the window was Rei Todoroki. Mom, Shoto said in the softest voice he'd ever muster. Sitting in front of him was his mom. The last time he saw her she threw boiling water at his face. Shoto had never blamed her for what she did. Deep down he knew the root of the problem was Endeavor. Had he never pushed his family so hard perhaps they could have had a good life together. Fayumi is still holding out for hope to be a family. And after yesterday attack Natsuo was more inclined to be closer to her and himself as he didn't want the last words of his family to be harsh. Endeavor, he wasn't sure what he wanted but it was far too soon to even say that he could even be in the same room as him. But the truth is, Shoto needed closure from his mother so that he could continue on his journey to becoming a hero without any doubts holding him back. He wants to keep his promise to his guardian. He may have realized that this was the best way to demonstrate that promise. Do I know you? Ray asked with complete calmness in her voice. But despite that it made Todorok stop, his entire body felt like he'd been hit by a blizzard. Wh dot dot what dot 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 what did you say? Shoto couldn't accept that that was the first thing she'd said to him. Does she not recognize him? No there's no way she could forget her youngest kid. Do I know you? She repeated again her facial expression not having changed from the very simple but curious look she was giving Todoroki. She stood up and slowly made her way to Shoto. She gently put her hands on his cheek. They locked eyes, her head titling to the side. Her confused expression didn't change at all. I'm sorry but I don't know. Can you tell me who you are? I forget so many things. She asked as she sat back down. Shoto didn't move an inch when she touched him. Her hands were so cold but it had been the first time his mom had touched him in years. He should have felt comfort but instead he felt nothing. There wasn't any joy or anger. There was just emptiness. And her face. She truly didn't remember him at all. He just froze up. He froze up in the middle of the room. Barely registering what had happened much less what he'd asked her. He began to breathe heavy I. I'm. My name is Shoto Todoroki. I. I'm your son. Todoroki. She asked inquisitively. She reached for a drawer and opened it containing a few books. Todoroki. She mumbled as she began to flip the pages of one her books but stopped mid-read I'm sorry but Todoroki isn't on my names to remember. You said you're my son. Forgive me I've never been married. How can you be my son? You. Don't. Yo. Shoto began to stumble at his words don't you remember? Me. Fayumi. Natsuo or Toya. She shook her head. Those names were all unfamiliar to her. Even when Shoto asked about Endeavor she still remained calmed. Had she forgotten the trauma he inflicted on her too? He sat across from her pulling up a chair so he could look her directly in the eyes. When Shoto asked what she remembers she pulled out a pile of notebooks. Each were labeled with names, activities, poems, and new things. She began to explain that she's been given a task every day. Write about her day and keep on adding new things to her notebooks. It helps her remember where she is and to be honest she says she doesn't mind it. She really enjoys writing. Sometimes it's easier to write what you feel rather than saying it. Shoto inquired more about the day. She gets up bright and early, has a nurse attend to her throughout the day. She writes about it each day and the nurses read her stories out loud for her. She spends time outside in the garden. They have a good view of lake nearby as that's where she does most of her writing. Shoto decided to pull up pictures of his siblings and showed them to her. Still she doesn't know who the people on those pictures are. When that wasn't enough he showed her videos of her children, hoping they could maybe rekindle something in her but still nothing happened. When he pulled out a picture of her and him as a kid she was stunned to see her with a small child. She did smile and said the boy looked adorable and happy. Shoto reminded her that he was that child. She handed him back the picture putting her hand over his. Ray apologized for not remembering but it becomes hard to remember who she even is. She then noticed his scar and gently put her hand on it. Shoto winched internally. The last time she touched his scar it was to use her quirk to soothe the damage she did to him. 
Ray closed her eyes and pulled her hand away asking if his scar hurts. But Shoto shook his head in disagreement the pain had long passed physically but emotionally the images of her throwing the kettle pot were still there. Shoto asked if he could read some of her books. She let him read a few and throughout each page there was nothing on him or his family. No mention, no whisper not even a comment about their quirks. That was the whole point of her marriage and there had been nothing about her quirk. The longer he read the more broken he started to become. Maybe she can't remember but there must have been a time when she did remember. When she knew who her kids were, so where was it? Where was that written? Did she even care to write it down? She gave her back the notebook fighting every urge to yell or scream but he couldn't do it. He couldn't do that to his mom, she didn't deserve his anger. Maybe she can't remember but maybe she can heal. There are doctors out there who could help her. He'd have to ask Shepard but he was certain he'd say yes. When Shoto asked her if maybe he could be part of her life again. But to his horror she asked do I know you? She'd already forgotten this entire conversation. Just how much could she remember and for how long? What was today even for? Why did he even bother coming here if it meant more pain? He stood up and bowed to her, apologizing for taking up her time. She looked out the window as if nothing had happened goodbye mom. Shoto said to himself opening the clinic door. Shoto realized Ray was gone. The woman he just chatted with was a complete stranger. Her touch was cold. No warmth, no love from a mother to a child. Was this what closure felt like because it felt like absolute shit? His grand reunion with his mom? No with Ray, and it was a complete mess of a shit show. How he wished he could forget this entire experience, something Ray already did to his face. God he was so frustrated, he couldn't even imagine how Fayumi answered Natsuo would react when he tells them. If he even should, maybe ignorance is better than bliss. Maybe it would be better if he was the only Todoroki that knew about this. Todoroki closed the door. He averted his gaze from his teacher as he slowly began to walk away from him. He then felt Shepard grab his arm kid. She doesn't remember me Shepard. Shoto pulled his arm away from his mentor. He still refused to look at him. I don't want to be here anymore. Kid I told you to give me your trust right. Shepard asked with pure concern. And look what it got me. He spat with anger, gritting his teeth. Shepard bit his lip and closed his eyes. That stung right there. To know he'd broken Todoroki's trust like that. I didn't mean for this to happen. Let me talk to one of the doctors. I'll get things sorted out kid. Shoto only sat down, averting his eyes to look at his guardian. Do whatever you want. Shifter didn't waste time on getting answers. As it turns out Ray had been diagnosing with dementia for the past seven years. She lost her memory of who her family was two years ago. When asked if there was any way to treat it he was told that someone had already been trying to treat her recovery. Turns out Endeavor had already hired the best doctors and mental quirk users money could offer. But even they couldn't do much for her as the damage to her was more severe than was believed. Despite these setbacks Endeavor continues to fund her treatment. Even after the doctors emphasized that her condition hadn't improved, nowadays she has trouble remembering her own name but she's always assisted by someone to help her get by the clinic. Strangely the one thing she remembers how to do is write. Her proficiency in writing literature and poems hasn't stopped since she got here. The doctors have tried to use that to see if she could remember anything about her past but there's barely been much success. Once Shifter told Shoto the news he only sat there in silence. He clenched his fist before having enough. Todoroki stood up and nudged Shifter's arm let's just go. Shoto asked in a very soft voice. His head was down not even looking at his teacher. Are you sure kid? There's nothing more for us here. Let's just get out of this place. He didn't wait for his teacher to respond he only started to make his way out to the clinic. Shifter knew that the best thing for Shoto was to leave this place. He followed through as they both made it out and into the car. Shoto didn't say a word as they began to drive to Yue. Throughout the entire time Shifter continued to look at Todoroki with worry, but more so with guilt. He wanted him to meet his mom in the hopes that Shoto would help him heal. But instead he made things worse. He unintentionally caused the kid more trauma than he already had. He fucked up and he didn't know how to fix it, or if he even could fix it. What a waste Shoto thought to himself. All his life he's had to live with this scar on his face. All his life he's had to enforce hardships by his father and now by his own mother. It shouldn't be a surprise really, I mean look at him. Why would anything good happen to Shoto's life in the first place? It's too much to ask for anything really. It's too much to ask for closure right. It's too much to even imagine the idea of him having a loving parent. No that's not possible. That won't ever be possible. Todoroki couldn't take it anymore and he didn't care. He unbuckled his seatbelt and opened the Camaro door. Kid, Shepard shouted as Todoroki had booked it. He didn't get a chance to use his quirk to bring Shoto close as he'd already disappeared in the crowd. Fuck, back at Yue. After a shared meal with Aizawa in the cafeteria, Katsuki and Izuku had spent the next few hours training. Since they were cleared by Recovery Girl they'd figure they could return back to their old training regimen. Aizawa was there to supervise as he wasn't about to let them go all out again. And he'd rather not deal with dad mode shifter. Throughout it all they were extremely competitive towards each other. 
but that's just how they brought out the best in one another. Beginning the training with proper stretches, they first limited themselves to exercises to see who could outlast who the longest. When it was made very clear that they were still were tied both decided to kick things up with fighting. Aizawa was still on guard but both reassured them they wouldn't be using their quirks just yet. He allowed the sparring match to happen as he sat down near the bleachers. Midoriya and Bakugo got into their respective fighting stances. They gave each other a grin before lunging at each other. For the beginning they were both neck and neck, both getting a few good blows and blocks after while they decided to kick it up a notch and began to use their quirks. It felt good to use their quirks again. The sports festival was a huge awakening for both of their quirks. They got a glimpse of what their lives as pro heroes could be and they hadn't felt that way since challenging their father. It was a rush of adrenaline that they couldn't wait to experience in the future. At the moment however, they were still sticking with the basic. They both knew that once they got back school they'd start to learn more advanced moves. As the battle went on Izuku figured it was time to practice Danger Sense. He wasn't sure if he could use it in conjunction with OFA so he turned it off surprising Katsuki. He told him he wanted to try something new, and Kastuki obliged. As Bakugo began to throw some moves at Izuku he noticed his brother was able to dodge each of his moves. At first it was small but as the training went on Izuku's perception of danger sense only got better. Now he was able to perfectly block Katsuki's moves and able to deliver some counters. All go a sudden danger sense turned off, and it caused him to collapse. Bakugo stopped her when he saw his brother collapsed. It had just been like last night. Deku, it happened again didn't it? Extending a hand concerned that his brother may have another headache. Izuku took a second to catch his breath. He could feel danger sense turn off. Seems it worked better when he's fully focused but it only lasts for a few minutes. But that pain from yesterday had all but been gone. Was this his first step in learning more about OFA? He'd have to think more on it. He took back Hugo's hand as he stood up whipping the sweet from his forehead. Not like yesterday, there's no headache for one. But what happened last night it's about my quirk. I'll definitely tell dad and uncle Toshi don't worry. Bakugo gave a grunt as a confirmation. Glad the nerd wasn't hiding something only needing time to process everything. And if it involves OFA then all the more reason to tell the old fart and all might. Aizawa had made his way to the boys, asking if Midoriya was alright. He assured him he just got a bit winded from getting back into training. Just then the three of them heard a clap well that was certainly something. A tall man with triangular shaped glasses stood at the gym door. He had green shiny hairy that was worn down. There were three yellow streaks on his hair, matching the yellow rims on his glasses. He wore a white suite with gold buttons and had elongated features, such as arms and a long neck. His demeanor was a rather serious one given by his cold facial expression. No way. You're Sir N-I-G-H-T-E-Y-E. Izuku was on full fanboy mode much to Bakugo's annoyance. All Might's one and only psychic. And he was here in the same room as Izuku. Night I paused at hearing Midoriya's voice chime up. He'd only really read his file but didn't anticipate for this boy to be a fan of him. So you're a fan? Midoriya unintentionally activated OFA as he light up of course I do. You're All Might's only sidekick. I started to become a fan when I found out you worked with him in his silver age. And you get to work alongside him. That's such an incredible opportunity. I know he's a part-time teacher here but being his on to sidekick has to be such an experience. And speaking of amazing your quirk. Foresight. I don't think there are many quirks that can affect time but yours is definitely one of those few. By the way if you blink while making eye contact with someone does that cancel out your quirk? And is there really no way for you to extend the timing process? I mean only once a day use is a huge downside I'll admit but if you could find a way to prolong your... Oh my god. I went on a ramble sorry. I just lose myself whenever I think of unique quirks. Izuku was now bowing up and down. Thankfully Katsuki smacked literally sense into him. You know of my quirk. Night I hid his confusion well. To everyone else he looked like a normal human being. Not having a mutation quirk helped disguise the true nature of foresight. Yet here was someone that knew of the conditions to activate and how long it lasts. He cursed internally seems Anton gave him some intel. Oh yeah. Being able to see the future and being able to predict the enemy's movements. Such an amazing support quirk. Is it any wonder your agency has some of the best investigation teams Japan has to offer? Izuku Midoriya. The boy who's inherited OFA. All night I could see is someone who didn't deserve that quirk. Yet here he was in front of him, reading him like a book. It is true he did feel a small sense of pride of being All Might's psychic. He hounded his for months on being one and since then has done his best to be thankful for that chance. They did have a falling out after the battle with AFO but they were able to patch things up thanks to Shifter. And he heard right, Midoriya knew his quirk well. Truth be told he hadn't thought of a way to increase the time of his quirk. Being able to see the future can be a blessing and a curse sometimes. He did see All Might's dead. And he tried to change that future by providing a worthy successor. But now that future may as well be set in stone becoming OFA doesn't have a worthy successor. Aizawa spoke up from what I heard you spend most of your time at your agency. Or you're out in the field. 
Why come to UA? He raised an eyebrow. Nidai was mostly a behind-the-desk kind of man, doing mountains of paperwork for those under his work along with All Might. It often left little time for him to leave his agency. Nidai turned to address a racerhead perhaps I may be a bit old-fashioned, but I much prefer to deliver all my internship spots personally to the principal. I was about to take my leave but seeing the top two winners of the sports festival train has piqued my interest. Aizawa still had calm expression. He couldn't tell what his play was but Nidai retained a serious demeanor. And is your interest satisfied? They're effective, only their first year at UA. But their fighting style and quirk usage is something to consider, particularly towards you Izuku Midoriya, pointing right at him. Me, me, Izuku asked. Nidai narrowed his eyes at him. Yes you have a quirk with tremendous power yet you're only limiting yourself at a safe pace. Why not try to push far beyond your limits? Izuku rubbed the back of his neck well it's a hard quirk to learn how to use but I'm getting there. I mean if I start to break every bone in my body during training or out in the field I'd only be a hindrance to my team. That's what I've been taught so far. That last comment was directed at Aizawa. Thankfully he taught the kid much earlier about not getting making yourself a liability while out in the field. That may be true but your progress hasn't been what it should be. At this rate can you confidently say you'd be able to match a future pro, much less All Might? Izuku stiffened up a bit. He knew he was making good progress on OFA. All Might himself said it and he'd even unlocked a new quirk. No way was it a lie. He may only have a few months on this quirk but he was making the best of it each and every day. Boy Giraffe lay off. He's been trained by the best and is making good time on his quirk. Or did you not see how he we fought blow for blow? Back Hugo may have accidentally let out an explosion but no way was he gonna let anyone discourage the hard work Izuku has put into leading how to safely use OFA. Your standards of the best need to be raised higher than. Nidai knew exactly who he was talking about I only deal in facts. And the facts state that Midoriya's quirk has vast potential to do good for society. Yet he limits himself each day when he could go much further than he believes. You believe he has limits. I know he has no such limits other than the mental blocks he puts himself in. Back Hugo eyes twitched. Standards need to be raised. The fuck no. Shifter is the only hero better than All Might. And mental blocks. Izuku has no blocks a bit of a self-sacrificing idiot that would jump in front of a car to save a cat. But he's still a damn good person. Mental blocks. Hell no Deku gives it his all in everything. Besides who the fuck are you to criticize what he can and can't do? Just because you're All Might's psychic doesn't mean you get to peg Deku down on the progress of his quirk. Nidai's gaze didn't falter at seeing Bakugo defend Midoriya. Seems their bond to brotherhood was true, but his mind wasn't changed. He still saw Izuku as someone that needed far better training and a much better understanding of OFA. Before he could retort at Bakugo's comment the four of them heard the door slam open. Nidai. All Might's voice rang as he entered the gym. He was not in the mood. Todoroki had been running for what seems like hours. He bumped into so many people but he still continued on running. This wasn't supposed to happen, he was supposed to get closure. He was supposed to finally hear her again and ask for an apology. Today was the day he hoped to build a bond with her, hoping to have her back after all these years. But it would never come to be. Do I know you? Those were the first words he'd heard her say to him in a decade. She'd been slowly forgetting who she was. She'd already forgotten who her kids were two years ago. Two years ago. Fuck how the hell can he even bring himself to tell Fayumi and Natsuo about this? She barely even knows who she was. Why? Why did it have to be like this? Why couldn't he have had the chance to at least say sorry or goodbye? Why did she have to forget? Why did he think that for once things could be better? Why did he have to be born a Todoroki? He collapsed out of breath in a nearby alley. Now that the adrenaline was wearing off it was hard for him to catch his own breath. His arms and legs has caved in, barely able to lift them up. He drops and sits in an unknown alley. He can feel tears streaming from his eyes but he doesn't care. Nor does he care that he's leaving his head on a dirty dumpster. Not like it matters. Nothing really matters right now he just wants this day to end. He just wants to forget this day ever happened. He heard a few footsteps. What's a kid doing out here? A man with a cigarette said. Shoto didn't answer. Little boys should know better than to mess in our turf. Another man said. Oh he must be in a shady part of Tokyo alleyway. Great job. Being aware of where you ran. Wait hold on that's Endeavor's son. Great a constant reminder of who he was. Hell yeah think of how much money will make it kidnapping the number two hero's kid. That got in Shoto's nerves. The thought of being used for ransom, like he was just some object to be used. Just like his father used him, it pissed him the hell off. Fuck off, both of you. Todoroki glared at them. Some fire beginning to show. What did you say boy? I said F but the man interrupted Shoto with a kick. The two men began to beat Shoto by kicking and punching. Todoroki could have made short work of them but he wasn't emotionally or physically good. He started to hear his father's voice in his head, each blow reminding him of his training with his father. Get up Shoto you aren't done. Kick. Wake up your training is beginning an hour early. Punch. Is that all you can do? Again. Slap. You will surpass all might Shoto. 
That is your one and only purpose. Stump. Get away from my kid. Shoto's eyes shot up to see Shepard had rammed his fist on the upcoming attackers. He followed with a hard side kick and rammed his knee to the other guy's face. Shepard didn't hold back at all with each blow he broke the two men's jaw and ribs with those hits. He would have continued but he stopped when he heard Todoroki whimper out his name. That distraction was all that was needed for those two attackers to escape. He would have chased after them but he had more critical things to watch over. He ran to Shoto to check for bruises and he had several, a black eye, and more than likely a broken rib. His hand was also a bit bruised with at least two broken fingers. Fuck he had to take him to recovery girl ASAP. Sensei, Shoto quietly said, Hey I'm here kid, I'm gonna take you to but Todoroki lunged at him with a hug. Thank God Shepard had a good footing otherwise he would have fallen. He brought his arms up to wrap around Shoto and placed his hands gently on his back being careful not to squeeze too tight at fear of hurting him worse than he was. The second they made contact, Shoto let out an intense sob. Shepard closed his eyes as he began to rub circles on Shoto's back. It's okay, kid. It's okay. Anton gently shushed him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Todoroki was now crying as he couldn't take any more today. I didn't mean to run. I didn't mean to be such a burden sensei. His fist tightened around Shepard's jacket. She doesn't remember me. She can never know who I am. How can I say I'm sorry to her? How can I tell her I never blamed her for that accident? All I wanted from her was for her to be a part of my life. But now I can't ever have that. Me, Fayumi, Natsu, and Toya why did we have to be Todoroki's? Why couldn't we have been born to a different family away? Why am I cursed to be a burden? Anton continued to gently rub his wards back. But he stopped when he heard all the bottled up emotions Todoroki had. Gods his voice sounded so broken and tired. Having been asked such a devastating question. Shepard got misty eye as he bit his bottom lip. Is that how he saw himself? As a burden to others, and fucking hell the emotional damage he has now. Shifter composed himself so and swallowed the lump in his throat that was forming. Shoto, you never have to apologize to me. I'm not mad that you ran away like that. I was worried. And you are not a burden. You are a strong kind individual. You're someone who loves his older siblings. Someone who's beginning to find out who he is. And that makes me so proud kid, knowing that you're trying. He gently squeezed the kid a bit tighter. I want you to know that I'll always be there to heal the pain your father has caused you. It wasn't fair that you didn't even get a proper reunion with your mom. Because you deserve so much Shoto, you and your siblings. You deserve a life free of abuse. A life where you can laugh, sing, dance and smile. A life where you can choose whatever or whoever you want to be. And a life with her. She may have given you that scar, but something tells me she regretted it. She reached her breaking point because of Endeavor not you. It was a horrible accident what happened to you that night. Don't ever say or think that you're a burden kid. Because you're not. And you're not cursed kid. You're a blessing because you're here. Shepard had started to cry. He could feel a few tears drop down from his cheek. You chose me as your guardian. And I can't tell you how much that means to me kid. To know you trust me enough to guide you with your future. I'm so honored that you consider me good enough to look after you. I promise you, I'll never let you down kid. I swear it in the names of your siblings. I will never give up on you. Shoto tightened his grip despite the fact that he had a broken finger. He sobbed more, hyperventilating, and ignoring the pain from the beating earlier. I'm so sorry, you didn't break my trust. You didn't do anything wrong. I'm such a terrible ward. I don't deserve you as my guardian. Shoto began to tremble in Shepard's arms. Hey, none of that kid. I'm lucky to have you in my life. Don't ever doubt your decision to ask me to be your guardian. Because I won't ever doubt my decision to fight for you kid. Shepard could hear renewed sobs coming from Todoroki. The kid burying his face so deep Shifter worried he wouldn't be able to breathe. But he let Shoto get it all out. He slowly moved one hand, never taking his eyes off the kid. He placed his hand on the back of Shoto's hair, gently rubbing it. They were like that for a long time, kneeling on the floor. Todoroki's face never once leaving Shepard's shoulder. He knows for a fact he balled his eyes as that area felt wet but he couldn't care less. His only priority was Shoto's safety. Shifter could then feel Shoto's arms slump down on his back. When he didn't hear anything from him he was worried that he had been damaged somewhere else. Shoto, Shepard asked with raised concern in his voice. He looked to see Shoto had passed out in his arms. From all the running, taking a beating and having just cried so much Todoroki had been drained. He lifted Todoroki in his arms and began to walk. His Camaro not too far away. I got you son. Back at UA. Night I had adjusted his glasses I was only having a few words with Midoriya, nothing more. He still remained calm and stoic as ever despite that fact that All Might had an irritated face. All Might had an appalled look rather than his cherry smile it doesn't matter. You were told to stay away from young Midoriya. Or did you forget that Shifter specifically told you to never come in contact with his son? That sent some alarms. Bakugo didn't hesitate to keep Izuku behind him. Aizawa was now standing in front of Midoriya. And Bakugo. If Anton didn't want someone to be near his kids that's all the reason he needed to be a shield for them. 
The surprised look on the boys meant that Shep only told All Might and no one else. He did say such things and I did give my word I wouldn't interfere with his role at UA. But it was a rare opportunity for me to see how far he's come along. Especially after only unlocking his quirk a few months ago. He turned to see Izuku for a moment but returned to look at All Might. But after seeing his progress today I'll admit he's grown but it's not enough. His battle at the sports festival shows what he could accomplish if he allowed himself to not hold back. And in the hero work you're supposed to give it your all. But can you really be sure he's truly suited to use that quirk? Aizawa interjected, narrowing his eyes at Night Eye, before All Might made a comment. As his homeroom I can attest that Midoriya works harder than anyone to keep his quirk under control. The sports festival may have been the only time I've ever seen him push far beyond his safety but it was only to ensure that he showed everyone the fruits of all his hard work and dedication. Aizawa wasn't going to let anyone question one of his students' growth. Night Eye stared at Eraser. The two hadn't met up until now but even without his quirk he could tell he wasn't a hero to be taken lightly. The blankless expression made it hard to read any of his tells. One thing he could see is he protective of his students why else would one of his hands already start to reach for his capture scarf? I'm only stating my beliefs that's all. Especially since he developed a quirk late. Can you be confident of former Kui? All Might slammed his fist against the wall accident breaking of the pavement, startling the boys and even Eraser flinched at the sound. If you finish that sentence about my nephew I will cut all ties with you Murai Sasaki. All Might's voice boomer across the gym the last time he was this angry was at the USJ incident. Your nephew. For the first time night I lost any and all calm demeanor. He stood their eyes as wide as they could be. A drop of sweat had gone through his face as he gulped upon hearing All Might raise his voice. Shepard's influence I imagine. Don't tell me you've come to see this boy as your nephew. And what if I have? He and his brother are my two successors that will surpass me as the new number one hero. And if you still can't see past your own ideas then leave. We were both very clear and adamant that you keep clear from him. Sometimes everyone forgot just how angry All Might could get. He was the soul of modesty and peace but when his anger erupted it would cause any powerful villain to remember who All Might was. Had he been wrong? Had he been too stubborn and prideful to admit his own failure? It is true Izuka's growth was beginning to show, but he still couldn't look past All Might's foreseen death. The idea of a world without All Might was too much for him. Years of camaraderie has meant so much to him. It still didn't sit right with him that he didn't even at least disclose his decision of passing on OFA. As you wish All Might, I did not mean to overstep my bounds today. Night I excused himself leaving the gym in a hard silence. He would have much to think about when he returned to his agency. Bakugo looked at Izuku to make sure he was alright. Aizawa was still surprised to even hear All Might yell. And Izuku however was more or less alright but he was far more confused about the entire event that had just happened. You referred to them as your nephews. The racer raised an eyebrow which All Might didn't respond to I get it, Shep trusts you a lot. But what exactly did you mean by Night I wasn't allowed to see Midoriya? And Midoriya and Bakugo are your successors. The more Aizawa asked the more he got curious or irritated would be a lack for a better choice of words. Yagi began to contemplate perhaps it would be wise to tell Eraser had everything. They may be as different as night and day but they both want the best for their students. And besides if Shifter could trust the both of them with his past and his sons it's not fair Aizawa shouldn't know about OFA. Aizawa I believe it's time you know the truth about young Midoriya's quirk and by extension my own. Why well, you sure about this uncle? Why not run it over with the old fart first? Katsuki commented rather brashly. Your father will understand young Bakugo. And besides he said I would always have the final say on who knows the truth. The truth about his quirk. Aizawa looked, completely lost, at the three other people. Not here, let's go to the teacher's lounge. Shepard and Todoroki walked the halls of Yue. Todoroki had woken up halfway through the car ride to Yue. He hadn't spoke a word since his breakdown with Shepard. Matter of fact Shoto was glued to Anton's side, using his non-broken hand to have a death grip on Shepard's jacket. He looked one second away from having another mental breakdown but Shifter also stuck to him like glue. Once inside they had made their way to Recovery Girls Clinic. He opened the door to find her going over some medical charts. Ah Shepard here to pick up your sons. Recovery Girl asked as she put her charts away. She saw Todoroki was behind him. Odd she hadn't been aware that he would be with Shifter. I need you to use your quirk on Todoroki. He's got a black eye, a possible broken rib and a few of his fingers are bent. Please do what you can. Shifter directed Todoroki to one of Recovery Girl's medical beds. When she heard Shifter's request she wasted no time to use her quirk to heal Shoto. Within minutes his injuries were healed. He spoke for the first time thanking her. He laid down the side effects of her quirk already hitting him. He reached out to tug at Shifter's jacket don't leave me sensei, please. Shifter assure him he wasn't going anywhere only going to pull up a chair so he can sit next to him. He let him go as Anton grabbed a chair and plopped a seat right next to him. He gently put his hand on Shoto's head rubbing his hair. Shoto gave his teacher a thankful nod before his eyes grew heavy. 
He had a terrible day, being mentally broken by his mother and being physically hurt by two crooks. By all accounts he should just leave Yue, he should quite being a hero. It would be the perfect revenge against Endeavor, his perfect creation no longer following his plans. It would have been way too easy just to give up and say goodbye to the hero life. But when he looked at his teacher, he realized that would be wrong. Shepard had been there every step today, keeping him safe physically and mentally. He really meant it. He really was taking his role as a guardian seriously. It wasn't what he expected when he's first asked to be put in his care. He didn't think Shifter would let him into his home, welcome him into his family, stand up to his father, find out where his mom was. But he did all of that without asking for anything in return. Because I can. I don't need any other reason kid. That's how it all started. But now Shepard had a reason to watch over him. It was the one comfort of today knowing he had someone at his corner. As his eyes began to close he did start to think could they be more than just teacher and student, guardian and ward. Could they be father and son? It was a small but very important question he kept in the back of his mind. One day he'd ask if he could call him dad. But today wasn't that day unfortunately. He began to let himself drift away into sleep but he still outstretched his arm at his mentor. One look at Todoroki and it was the first time Shepard could relax for just a moment. As Shoto started to pass out he made sure to gently rub his head. He even gave a small hum tune in the hopes it would relax the dual-colored hair boy. It definitely worked as he would could notice high shoulders and body slowly gave out to rest. It was insane how much Anton already loved Shoto after only being his guardian for a few days. Maybe it had to do with the fact that he'd grown to become a parent over the years, some primal instinct to protect the weak and neglected. Or perhaps it was because he saw his younger self in him, an abused kid who was forced to into a terrible life, having been cheated out of his childhood. Only Anton didn't have anyone as a kid, he only had himself and his quirk. And in front of him was a scared kid with the same issues he had all those years ago. Only this time, someone was going to be there for that neglected kid. Shepard made him a promise today, swearing on the two people that Shoto cared most about. Just as he had still kept his promise to Midoriya and Bakugo never to separate them he wasn't planning on letting him down. He'd more than likely spend the rest of his life upholding that promise, to make Shoto feel loved and protected as he always should have been. Back at the teacher's lounge, Aizawa sighed. So All Might you suffered an injury years ago that nearly killed you, and because of that you began to look for a successor. Gesturing at Izuku once Yagi confirmed his story, and Midoriya was quirkless until you transferred OFA to him before the school year started. He looked at everyone in the room with a tired expression. That is correct. Yagi gave him a serious nod. When it came to OFA he was always serious and at his best. Who else knows? Aizawa asked as he began to slouch a bit on his chair. Myself, Principal Nenzu, Recovery Girl, Cementos, Detective Tsukachi, Night Eye, and Shepard. Young Bakugo is the only student who knows about OFA. After the explanation the room went silent. Izuku did feel guilt on having a racer into this, or rather that he kept this knowledge from his homeroom teacher. He had nothing but respect for him, and gratitude for being the old man's friend. All this new information however, had caused Aizawa to have a not so happy face. Well let's keep it that way then. Aizawa let out another sigh for now I'll need some time to think things over to process all of this. Your secret is still safe with me. But I would like to know one thing. Why were you so adamant on keeping Midori away from your psychic? If he knows about OFA wouldn't he be a good candidate to teach Midoriya? That question was something the boys wanted to know too, especially Izuku. Being trained by All Might's one and only sidekick would be amazing but here his mentor was saying no. Yagi's expression was a more so grim look, because Nidai promised Anton he wouldn't interfere with young Midoriya's training. The wide eye expression from Izuku had All Might confused until he looked down I'm not surprised your father didn't tell you young Midoriya. He was only trying to protect you. Midoriya's entire facial and body expression were on nervous mode. Protect me. From what? My boy, I came to this school to find a successor. But before that I struggled to even find a good candidate. Me and Nidai spent months on finding students who be good choices to inherit OFA. But Nidai informed me his student Mirio Tagata would be a good choice. One of this school's big three as I recall. He's a trained third year and is the top of his class, along with having a good control of his quirk night I deemed him to best candidate. I still needed time to truly choose someone but that all changed during the sludge villain incident. Pak Hugo looked at All Might as he tensed up. What that slime fucker did to him all those months ago still irritated him. When he saw his brother tense up they needed to get to the point. Explain why the sludge villain changed your mind. When I saw your brother save you well it reminded me of my own past experience. I tried to help my previous mentor in a battle with nothing but an old iron wrench in hand. He chuckled at his reminiscence of his teacher. When asked why I help I told her my body just acted on its own. Same as young Midoriya's. I knew right then and there your brother was the perfect candidate to take up OFA. And I will always stand by that decision my boy. But when night I found out he was less than pleased. It just didn't feel right that I give OFA to a stranger, to someone he didn't know anything about. 
but I always stood my ground on that decision. And then your father and Nighteye began to talk. They saw eye to eye on hero work but whenever OFA was brought things always became heated for a lack of better words. All Might was downplaying the many arguments that would ensue with those two. It was hard to imagine. Both pros had a knack at being effective teachers and were incredibly well good at what they did. But Nighteye's doubt on Izuku usually resulted in Shifter having to storm out after a long heated debate. Despite it all, Shifter never made any threats on Nighteye out of respect to All Might. It all reached a breaking point when Nighteye asked to meet you on your first day of UA. From what I gathered I believe he wanted you to give up OFA. That was met with Izuka's face becoming pale, going back to being quirkless. No, he'd endured and worked so hard for someone to ask to give up OFA. Before Izuku could speak All Might raised his hand to interject. But Anton well he wasn't going to let him anywhere near you. Mostly because he wanted you to have a normal school life. One where you didn't have to worry about comments calling you quirkless. Since that day he's kept his distance from you. He inhaled a deep breath I am sorry young Midoriya I know this is a lot to hear but if you want to be angry at someone be angry and me and not your father. You know he'll always have your best interest. Yagi bowed his head down, hoping that Izuku wouldn't take his anger at his father. Izuku looked down with sorrowful eyes, to know that someone out there wanted to ask him to go back to his old quirkless life. But that's not who Izuku was anymore, and he had his family to thank for that. He gave All Might a smile you both stood up for me, I could never be mad at that Uncle Toshi. I'm not that insecure boy anymore, thanks to Catch On, Dad and the people I've met at UA. It's nice knowing you stood up for me Uncle. All Might raised his head. He gave Midoriya an apologetic smile nonetheless. He was glad to hear that his confidence hadn't been broken. When asked if Nighteye would interfere with their lives again Yagi assured him he wouldn't. This time he would put his foot down and go and talk to his psychic personally. Bakugo gave him a grunted thanks while Izuku gave him a heartfelt smile at hearing his mentor continue to protect him. I'm still trying to wrap my mind you two are referring to All Might as uncle. The three jolted when they heard a racer speak. Seems they forgot he was still in the room with them. Believe me I momentarily panicked when they called me that. Yagi chuckled a bit rubbing the back of his neck. Why Hobo Sensei you want us to call you Uncle Zawa? Bakugo asked with a bit of a snarky attitude. Aizawa's eyes twitched as he gave an exasperated sigh not unless you want detention for the rest of your time at UA. Izuku now had a playful grin. Eh he's not really an Uncle Kak and he gives off more a tired grandpa vibe though. Holy shit how did we not see that sooner nerd? Bakugo asked as he now realized they could annoy their teacher more. I'm not that fucking old yet problem children. Well you do appear to be at least 50 given your appearance eraser. All might cut in, totally not trying to be a proud uncle moment. You don't get a say in this, you're literally one of the oldest heroes in this building. Izuku let out a snicker careful eraser, one phone call and we could have our dad cut your paycheck in half. Aizawa was so done with these he looked about ready to turn in his two seconds notice to Netsu. Bakugo gave a snort yeah but we'd never do that hobo sensei. That was just, a logical deception. Izuku chimed in at the perfect time, to make sure you were on your toes, the two of them said in sync. The boys let out a laugh immediately afterwards at being able to irritate their homeroom teacher. All Might tried his best to cover his muffled laughs eraser could only pinch the bridge between his nose. What did he get himself into with watching over these shitheads? At this point these two would cause him to develop early grey hair. Shoto woke up to a plate of cold soba next to him. True to his world shifter was awake and sitting in the exact same spot as he remembered. He began to eat his sobo, thinking on how to move forward. As far as he knew the closest thing he had to a parent was Shifter. Even after what he said to him, he still was still keeping his promise to him. Sensei what you said last night, about being hurt by family, did your family ever hurt you? Shifter watched in silence as Shoto ate his food. He's only really left to go lunch rush for a quick meal order. By the time he came back Todoroki was still out cold, so he put his plate of food next to him. He sat back down and went to his phone. He'd gotten an update on his boys from Aizawa. Just basic training, approved to use quirks, and both were at 100%. First bit of good news he's heard all day. When he saw Todoroki wake up Anton didn't want to pressure the kid, but he was glad he ate the soba. He wasn't sure what to say to the kid. Hell he was still torn with having broken the kid's trust. It wasn't until Shoto asked him about his family that he realized that maybe it wouldn't hurt for Shepard to be a bit open about his personal life with him. After getting confirmation that Shoto wouldn't reveal what he saw to anyone Anton stood up and turned his back on him. Shifter then took off his shirt to reveal the many scars he has on his back to him. When he heard Shoto's chopsticks drop on his plate he winced but he turned to face the kid, showing the two scars on his stomach and heart. That's when he began to explain the many experiments and body modifications done to him. How it all started when he was 5 years old and didn't stop until he was 18. Shoto had no words at what he just saw. The amount of scars his mentor has is concerning. There was so much damage done to his back it took everything Shoto had to not throw up. 
Even worse when he discovered it was his family, his parents, his older brother and sister that did this to him. He wanted to do something to help him but what exactly could he even do? But then Shoto realized it. Both were people hurt by their families. However, no one had been there for Anton. Yet here he was, being there for him. Your family did that to you. Sensei, you're a human being not some petri dish to have been experimented on. How could they get away with Shifter put his hand on Shoto's cheek? He hadn't realized he was crying. But he was crying for his teacher, seeing him like that it just wasn't right. They didn't care at all for me kid. They saw me as the perfect tool to shape into a knife. He put his forehead on Shoto's. So I understand what you're going through kid. I suppose it's why I'm so open with you. I see a version of myself that has the chance to heal. Someone who's been hurt so much, but can still walk away to give themselves a good future. Shoto felt comfort at the forehead touch. If his sensei had a second quirk it was definitely the ability to make you feel better about yourself. Does, Midoriya and Bakugo do they? Along with Recovery Girl, All Might, Eraserhead, and Detective Tsukachi. They found out when I woke up after my injuries from the USJ. And now you know to kid, so I can relate a bit of what you're going through. You trust me that much sensei? Shoto asked his hand on Shifter's arm. You're my ward kid. I only keep secrets from those I love for a reason. I'm treating you the same way remember that. Shoto grew a small smile. First one today and it felt reassuring that he's got one good thing going for him. Let's make a deal kid. I won't ever stop fighting for you. If you promise to never see yourself as a burden. Deal? Shoto's smile only grew and his eyes were definitely getting misty-eyed. He extended his hand out in a fist bump remembering that's what he did what his son's last night. Deal? Hearing that Shifter happily bumped fists with Shoto. I hope I'm not intruding Anton. Nedzu had walked in to see Shepard and Todoroki fist bump. Anton assured him he wasn't given the fact that this is his school. Nedzu let out a chuckle. It is true it was his building. But Nedzu did come in here for a reason. He wanted to tell Shepard his sons have healed well. They spent most of their time in the training room and were doing quite well dispute Night Eye's sudden interference in their training. Shifter eyes narrowed. What did Nedzu mean by Night Eye's interference? He knows he's supposed to stay an entire continent away from his son. Nedzu told him all about the conversation he had seen through the cameras. Shifter now had a serious look but was definitely mixed with worry. He asked if Nedzu could stay here and watch over Todoroki for a bit. Nedzu happily agreed Anf informed him his sons are in the teacher lounge with All Might and Eraserhead. Shepard nodded but looked back at Shoot assured him he wouldn't be long, but Shoto gave him a small nudge on the shoulder, telling him he'd be alright thanks to him. Shifter took his leave while Nedzu hopped on Todoroki's bed. Well Todoroki it seems Anton has taken you under his wing. At least this time he didn't retire from hero work and teaching. I do hope the transition has been well for you. Nedzu wanted to see Todoroki's side of things. There were few things he couldn't predict. Shepard taking in another kid was on that list. He knew he had a protective streak for his sons. He also knew that he always goes the extra mile for every one of his students. Even to this day he still remembers the sorrow each his past students experienced when he announced his retirement early. He's, he's been good to me. More than I could really ask for, or deserve by that matter. You mentioned he retired a few years ago. Aizawa sensei asked the same thing this morning. What exactly happened? Medzu eyes gleamed for a moment as he studied Todoroki. A thankful and curious kid I see. Why he adopted Midoriya and Bakugo. He was a past teacher here but he put his teaching and hero carrier on hold in Japan to focus on being a father. He approached Todoroki and offered him a close-eyed smile to this day I've never met a teacher that fights for his students as much as he does. I can assure you, Anton will make things better for you. That brought Shoto a small peace of mind. Second time today that a teacher told him that Shepard would make a good parent he would trust his mentor. After all it's into because of him that he didn't tell Nenzu he wanted to quite being in Yue. Might I offer you some tea Todoroki? It helps calm the nerves in the mind. Nenzu asked as he jumped off to the floor. But this is Recovery Girls Clinic. Nenzu's face had now been slapped with a mischievous grin and whose school is this? Using his phone he pressed a button. From the floor a small table popped up with several ingredients to make tea. All rooms have at least one hidden tea compartment for me, even Shifter's room. Now would you like some tea? Shifter had used his quirk in a frenzy. He damn well threatened Nine Eye to stay the hell away from Izuku. So why the hell did he have the nerve to ask a small one-on-one -on -one meeting with his son? Wait, shit, 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 OFA. He hoped that Izuku still had OFA. He knew Nine Eye still didn't see Izuku as a successor. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. He needed to know what the hell happened and fast. Once he made it to the teacher's lounge door he might as sweep swung it open with enough force to break the bolts. Out of breath he saw the surprised look at Yagi, Izuku, Katsuki and Shota. One glance was all that was needed for the pieces to connect. He closed the door and popped up a chair, finally taking a breath. I assume if Eraser is here you already told him about OFA Yagi. A question that All Might gave a firm nod to. Good then I can ask who allowed Night Eye near Izuku. 
Aizawa addressed his colleague that would be. I wasn't aware of the history between you and Naitai. Had I known I wouldn't have allowed any interaction between the two of them. Aizawa was as apologetic as he could muster. He'd unintentionally broke Shifter's trust which was something he himself values. It's fine, you didn't know. He looked at Izuku so you have any questions for me kid. Or anything that you want to clear the air from. Izuku had the most nervous look at seeing his old man sit down. He honestly looked about ready to murder someone. Thankfully he'd calmed down once everything had been explained. But Izuku did have a few things to say. They'd come clean to him. It's only fair he'd do the same. Actually there is something. It's about last night's attack. Deku, you sure? Katsuki asked already sitting more straight. Yeah no secrets, not from dad. Notes, the Vistage world makes an early appearance as Izuku starts his training with Danger Sense. Fun fact I did momentarily consider giving him Fajin last chapter but I thought Danger Sense would be a better choice. Todoroki meeting his mom. Yeah I wanted to take a different spin on this. In the stories I've read usually Rei is either horrible towards Shoto or completely apologetic to him. Here I decide to give her dementia. Can she really be healed? Unfortunately no. He condition has unfortunately worsened despite the help and she sadly won't be a part of Shoto's life. No I don't hate Shoto he's one of my favorite characters. His pain is only for the feels and character development he's gonna get. Oh yeah he finds out about Shifter's past a bit and sees why Anton is so dedicated to fight for him. And no that wasn't a type. Shep did call Shoto his son unfortunately Todoroki was completely out cold and he didn't hear it. Nine Eye was a bit of a complicated character to write. He's too proud to admit he was wrong but he knows that deep down All Might was right. Wait until he has more scenes I can promise you he's gonna have a reality check. Aizawa finds out about OFA because if he's entrusted with watching over the boys then learning about OFA should also be part of his resume. 